Right. Um, welcome to the Charge Attack podcast, um, instalment number two. Uh, I'm your host, Benjamin. Uh, I'm here with Luke. Hi there. And also, Elliot. We've got three of us today. Hello there. Hello. Um, so loads have happened in the, has happened in the past week. Um, we've got some very important things to tell you. Uh, predominantly, there has been three individual shows by each of the main console competitors, Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation. Uh, which we'll get on to in a second. But first of all, this week we have been playing Sekiro. Uh, we did talk about it last week on the podcast. Um, what are your thoughts, Luke? We weren't very good. <laughs> yeah. At first, at first. Um, but it was, that game was something else and it is still continued to be something else. Yeah, so um, so we've managed to get about, so far around about, about eight hours in, probably progressed... If you were to run from the start to the finish, it'd probably only take you about 10 minutes to get there. It, we're really slow. The, the learning curve on that game is just phenomenal. It's, it, it spikes so hard at the start that it will, it will catch you out so much. Even like compared to all the Dark Souls and the Bloodborne games, it's so much completely different to them. Um, which will make it seem so much harder. So after about after about eight hours, I'm starting to get more of the hang of it, more of a feel to it, um, which is great because it then is starting to not feel as crushingly difficult, um, but more of a more of a level battlefield. You know why that is? Why? Because you turned off the hard mode. Yeah, there is a, <laughs> just just as a warning. There is a bell that you can ring, which does make the game a lot lot harder. Um, don't ring it. Especially on your very first playthrough. Um, is this just a thing in the game? So yeah, so basically what happens in the game is there's a bell that you can ring and it does it does give you some somewhat of a warning that these enemies are gonna be increased in like their strength or their um, HP or you're gonna be weaker. However, I everything that you read in that game is like a riddle. Uh, every a single item <laughs> is just sort sort of cryptic. It just doesn't give you like the most the most perfect explanation. So when you picked it up and it just said, oh, those who ring this bell, this will happen. It will upset the beasts. And I was thinking, okay, that means I might have summoned a really strong beast somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then you get given this item. It's basically consuming that item will then revert and um, reverse the effects ah. of the bell. So but it doesn't go, tell you but it, it does, does that. <laughs> it, it does tell you, but again... Does it tell you it, as much as it, it tells, tells you about you. hollowing and ember? Is it that No. Mechanic? It's not that mechanic. It just says, like, banishes the demon or something? Yeah, it just says banishes the demon. So oh. you're just... I'm just... I didn't... Well, I'm, just, you, I'm just not very smart. It's well, basically the, the best way to look at it. It makes sense. But until that point, yeah, they're two different... It's an item and an in-game mechanic. There's yeah. no correlation between the two. Mm. Yeah, so we've made it fast past the first... Uh, the first proper boss, which is a... a a guy on horseback is probably Shogun. the easiest. Yeah, Shogun on horseback. Um, which we actually once we'd once we'd found out to reduce the difficulty, we'd be on uh, the second try actually, which wasn't too bad. Yes. Um, that, but essentially, as a general consensus so far of what we played of the game, very good, very very different. The stealth is so important to that game. It is a key mechanic. It was like it will just if you actually utilize stealth, you will you will enjoy the game and find it so much easier. But there is... You just... You can't rely on it. It will give you a few enemies to set up for a stealth kill yeah. to thin the herd, but then sometimes you just got to yeah. go when you've got uh, to have a few... You can't play fight. the whole game as a no. stealth game. No. You, know, you just have... It gives you, you, it gives you a major, major yourself. advantage. It stops you being swarmed right from the get-go and then literally surrounded. Yeah, that's that's the that's the easiest way to yeah. put it. Um, and then it is exactly the same as a, uh, um, as all the Dark Souls and all the and the Bloodborne game in the sense that you will beat a boss and you will feel like a king, and it, you'll feel amazing. And you go, oh, don't don't care about any of the smaller enemies. Well, don't care about anything. <laughs> you, until you, you get to until, the next until, boss. And, and then, yeah. <laughs> no, well, until you get to the next boss. Even then, like there was, we spent we spent about half an hour just trying to take down one giant because one of his grab attacks kills you in one hit uh, we spent about half an hour beat, eventually beat him like you feel like you can take on anything you deflect all the moves correctly yeah. you deal with this every single aspect of that perfectly you then go against one simple enemy with just a sword 
and and somehow you still manage to mess up and just well, get destroyed. That, that pike wielder guy in the robes, he was something else beyond yeah. anything we've seen in the game so far. He wasn't anything special. He was just a normal enemy, but was just and he just like he just like just tore through us every single time. And it's just one of those things. We will um we will continue to stream that game uh, and uh, show it on our Twitch whenever we get the chance to play it. It's usually on weekends from five o'clock onwards. We like to stream. Um, and what I'll do is the moment the, that I've finished completing it is I will write a review and a detail on what's the best way to approach it and if it's if it's worth buying. Yeah. So thoughts so far, liking it more or less than Bloodborne or Dark Souls? It's a different category for me. Really? It's hard, I, uh, mm. it's hard to throw them in because they are so like in so many ways... But then this one is so different. Yeah. It has the base mechanic of the, the dying and the respawning of Dark Souls. But the combat is is completely different. Instead of stamina, you have the, the poise bars. Yeah. Which you've got to right. keep up. Posture, as opposed to keep called, your isn't it? Yeah. posture. Yeah, yeah, in this stamina. one, yeah. Whereas that, obviously, Dark Souls never had that. To like a bar, so you could. It had it, but God knows what it did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure they even proved in Dark Souls Two that yeah. the poise bar actually didn't do anything at all. You could um, stagger an enemy uh, if you sort of hit them enough, but there was never any indicator of how close you were to getting to them. It's a case of yeah. just getting a lot Whereas of damage out quickly. This combat. you've got that bar, and it's a case of lower the lower their health, the slower they'll get their posture back. Mm. So obviously when it goes into red, then you yeah, keep it, it up. yeah, but it didn't. Des- that was the thing is we we were going along all this time and we we're fighting some of the stronger enemies and obviously you have to break their posture. Yeah, it di- we didn't we at no point did it mention the fact that to break the it the posture obviously will go down it'll like it's like a bar it slowly goes down over and time when you're not you're and not. recovers if you're not attacking. But at no point did the game at no point. For the first eight hours of this gameplay that we've done, <laughs> did it decide to mention that the lower the enemy's health, the slower it will reduce, which is probably quite vital information. It wasn't, is oh, that I that see. woman with the little blaze that turned up? And we were like, uh, yeah, well, exactly. Who's she? Like, oh, she's really fast. Yeah. And so you had oh, to chip away at her health so that she wouldn't get her poise back really quickly. Yeah. So you, it's not a case of just gunning for the poise. Thing. You've got to chip away health. There are times oh, where you yeah, have but, to focus on health. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. like you, just, you do this just love like going. Final for... Fantasy Thirteen to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just oh yeah, because it's going for the stagger, isn't it? Yeah. So um, but yeah, in in re- in like respect to like where it stands in the blood in like in my preferences on what game. So far, the way I'm feeling it is, I'd say it's it's sort of on on par with Bloodborne. So mm-hmm. and the way the way I the way I personally rank my the Bloodborne and Souls games, games is is Dark Souls one pretty much is just etched right at the top. Then just just after that is Bloodborne and I would say it's it's on par with that. And then Dark Souls three is a tiny bit just behind them. And, Dark and then two. Dark Souls two and unfortunately Souls. Souls. D- Dark Souls two is just a little bit further down. Demon Souls I, I like that game. I'd say maybe that one's that one's probably on par with Dark Souls too. Demon Souls was a great introduction to to the, this universe and from yeah. what from software is capable of. I think that showed showed basically what they can make and it was where they went to with Dark Souls is basically them going okay people like this aspect people yeah. like this aspect this is what That's we can do with it improve and, Demon Souls and Dark and Souls is especially Dark Souls 1, that is, although yeah. really easy to beat when you know like what you're doing a little bit more, that my first playthrough of that, easily a good 90 hours, because you run around not realising that humanity is actually something you should use <laughs> yeah. in the game. 20 which... hours for the Taurus Demon. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 20 hours for one boss. It's which is just ridiculous, Unacceptable. Really. But so the game doesn't hold your hand in the fact that you have to climb up the ladder, jump off the yeah. tower onto its head. You just think, I'm just going to hack away at its feet. Yeah, and then get stepped on, <laughs> which is why the the from software games are so unique. But yeah. then that's probably why they didn't want to give away quite too early on was um about the posture, um yeah breaking um and just finally just before we finish this subject the grappling in Sekiro, 
really does add another layer to that game. It is so much fun. It's so does fluid it and good? so much. Yeah, just like just like when you've got like six in a row and you just grapple nope. your way along no, and yeah. like everybody can like and every like you can see all the guards just sort of like watching you, just going, "What the fuck's that?" <laughs> sort of thing. Um, it is it is fun and like having the ver- versatility. Yeah. It does really give you a like really interesting sort of depth. Gives you more options than you'd expect. Not only single... is it like as a mechanic for getting kills and things, but it also opens up options for different pathways to certain areas. Yeah, we, we going... went the wrong way round. We found a <laughs> we've found a hidden entrance on a cliff. Oh. Um which we and we went that way and we like were behind loads of enemies, so we we're like, oh this is really awesome. We've obviously we found some sort of hidden entrance sort of thing. Yeah. Went through, stabbed everybody in the back, you know, the usual sort of thing. Climbed up a hole, found a found a uh, what, oh, the game's version of um, the purple bonfire. <laughs> Bonfires. The, there was a purple oh, right. Power Ranger on a cliff as well somewhere. As we named it. Um, <laughs> and so this bright purple guy off the top of this building just jumped down. And we were like, "Whoa!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, and yeah, and we like it turns out that we weren't supposed to be basically. In, we were basically inside this built this uh, the city, the Some main holes, city that's been yeah. attacked. Um, we were inside it while it was on fire, uh, and it turns out we weren't supposed to be there yet. We were supposed to basically go this the long way around this other area, yeah. talk to talk to a gentleman who gives you a key, and then he tells you to go along that secret path. So it's quite cool and interesting, and they've done it well. But yeah. there is, we're, we'll talk more about it during the review. Yeah. The other game we've been playing this week, and we did talk about it last week on the podcast as well, is The Walking Dead, the final episode of season four. Actually, it You've is. Got it right it? I've got it right this time. I've got it right this time. It wasn't season season three, as I once thought. Luke, who knows? Does you're Michonne the count. <laughs> <laughs> you're the... Season three was a weird one, so I'll let you off. Um, you're our resident Walking Dead expert. Yes, as um, the only one who's played all uh, of them all the way through. Yep, yeah, I did. I did. Shame um, on you all. I did watch. The, f- the gameplay yesterday you were there for the finale yes for the finale so, so I've missed everything apart from the end <laughs> yeah. uh, as as to be expected from me talk so us through it without spoilers without spoilers we'd without like to spoilers. clarify that as well <laughs> as obviously anyone who is aware who's ever played the Telltale games you would know that the finale would be a complete roller coaster of emotions with that and from one minute to the next you didn't know how the story was going and obviously that constant dread of who may or may not snuff it in in this. There are so many new characters added to this season that some of you don't give a shit about if they die. Others are like, "Mm, I'd like to see them stay on. And obviously then the main ones where if they die, that is it for me. I'm going to be heartbroken. Um, Also, we're not going to go into the final details of that, but it definitely keeps you wondering, is it going to happen now? And... That suspense definitely kept that that going. It answered quite a few questions that um, the earlier episodes and other seasons hadn't quite really picked up on, which is nice as well. So we got a bit of backstory um, with a little bit of a, like a flashback, playable flashback, didn't we? So that was it was good. Um, I recommend anyone who hasn't played it or finished it yet to get on and do that now. Um, but yeah, it, it was very sad to see to see it end after playing that those games for for years and almost growing up with with the characters. How many yeah. years has it been going? Oh, oh, I remember being in school when I was playing season <laughs> one. <laughs> season, I remember, season you had one yet to grow. Two thousand and seven or eight. It's a no long time way. ago. Yeah, that's that I didn't realize. After, in all honesty, I thought it you were, I thought you were going to sit there and say, first. "Oh yeah, it's only been six years since it first came out." I was thinking, I'd I mean, I'd started growing stubble then, so it's not really <laughs> not really since my childhood. But uh, yeah. that's quite important. Um, the one yeah. thing that I did notice is, as again, I, I'm not a big expert on it. Is um, most episodes? How long are they normally? About three hours. Aren't they? Um, I'd say nearer two, two and a bit. I'd say from. It's hard to tell. Are they, are they always different, are they? I think it varies across it the It does seasons. a bit, yeah. There's definitely been longer and shorter um, yeah. in, in the past. This one, um, it didn't feel long, it didn't feel short in in my head. It peaked a little bit and it dropped a little bit, which mm. sometimes when you think, is it coming to an end now? We're not too sure. But 
it felt like a normal episode. It didn't feel longer than than the others, but that might be because you're so engrossed in finding out what's going on. You're, you don't notice the passage. Yeah, you're time. forgetting about how long you've been playing it, which is a good thing because the last thing any developer wants is people going, "Oh shit, I've been playing this for for two oh, hours already. I yeah. better turn it off." You want to mm. think, "Oh god, I've been playing it for two hours. I'm not even realised because you've been so engrossed," which which I take as a as a positive. Yeah. yeah. Did it feel like? your ending in the end or did it feel like the ending no there's a lot of choices to be made a lot of choices in that game with this the choices were very small in in the final uh, episode i feel okay. um because as you know a lot of people who've played it obviously will know that it's about obviously you teaching aj the kid yeah. on how he reacts to certain things so there's a lot of little things that you do with him that then builds up to bigger decisions later on which you sort of already made the decision for but on how you've taught him yeah. already uh, but this very much did feel like this is how it was going to end yeah and it was more a case of who you had at the end with you was more of your decisions okay but there was a lot of different ways it could have gone for a lot of people in that series okay. uh, and when you get that sort of the stats at the end and find out what could have had these people you're like i can't even imagine how that story would have even come about how it sort of split it what way, decision yeah. would have caused this so it's definitely potentially worth going back and playing that one again because there's quite a few. Potentially doesn't sound strong to me. <laughs> it depends, obviously, if you enjoy the other well. characters yeah. enough to find out, or if you want to get them killed. Would if you, you don't would, like, are them. you more like? Uh, are you more likely? Because obviously, you have played this game, you've gotten your own ending. Are you more likely to just go onto YouTube and just search out like, what's this ending look like? Or With... are you more inclined to play it back yourself? How much? Because the, the, those games are as, only as fast play, paced as the as the game displays it. Yeah, there's okay. no there's no shortcuts or anything. Yeah, you can't skip stuff or anything like that. So the game is limited. The way I would look at it is it's like you're saying about let's say for example, let's let's round it down, let's say two hours per episode. There's how many episodes per season? Six? Four. Five. Right, four, okay. Five. Well there we go. We don't even know. Um <laughs> <laughs> so approximately so let's say again There let's was go. five in each of the first two. Sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's five on this one. So yeah. let's say, for example, on the last one, if there's five, then that's ten so hours that you're going to have to go through of adjusting all your decisions. And hopefully, this is only if it doesn't include season three as well. I think for me, I would be more inclined, because I'm not actively p- playing a game, I'm spending it watching, almost like watching a movie and making the decisions of the movie. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd want to go through and watch a ten-hour movie again Mm. especially right afterwards maybe it's something that you could do oh yeah down the it's, line. i i'm in no way i'm not emotionally ready to go back and do it again yeah <laughs> i need some time but um <laughs> with that game there's so many decisions over the entire this entire final uh season that there's no one who's going to make the exact same decisions that you want in a video so right, yeah. it might be a case of you have to go back and do it because there's so many different things you could do that differently, no one's going to have your exact path that you want to try and follow yeah. to get that outcome. It does sound like the decisions in the final season make more of a difference than they have done in previous seasons. You don't so I get feel like as season much... one. Not mm. a lot really changed based on your decisions. Like a... people were going to die whether you chose to save them at this point this or yeah. not. It's sort of like been just a long sort of debated thing is like to those Telltale games. Like, yeah. like do they really count? How much agency like how much do you really have? If of a game is it if like everything that you do, like the whole game is based around you making decisions. And if your decisions don't really affect the game really at all, then what's the, what's the point? But realistically, if you... The way I've always looked at that is it's exactly the same with any other video game. Just because you run over and kill that person first rather than that person first doesn't mean that when you get to the end, you're not going to save the princess. That's generally how it all works. So... It's it's it is Mario a it's, it's a weird the flag one. Whether you kill all the Goombas or none of them. Yeah, realist. That's that's another way to look at it, and it is like that's that's what I would take as a positive spin on those games because they don't get me wrong. Obviously, it, it's this, it's going through the storytelling. You interacting with it is your it like and making decisions. That is that's your interaction. That's you yeah. playing the game. The decisions. It, in it this. may not be too much. It may not be. It's not very strenuous. It's not very difficult. I can. That's absolutely fine. It doesn't oh, have I don't know. to be. Some of those decisions are pretty difficult. <laughs> the only ones yeah, were, were awful. But in this, there I can't remember one where it's like you've got like two shit situations and mm. you've got to try and pick which is better. I don't remember that because yeah. obviously that could then create whole new storylines. It very much was. 
decisions you make will then affect that character you're speaking to, oh, their okay. relationship with you, and how they might react later on. Kenny that will we can talk this. about spoilers. Kenny will remember this. <laughs> well, yeah, we Fuck can talk about Kenny. <laughs> we, can, we can talk about spoilers of season one, surely, because that's that's old. Enough. Oh yeah. No, I yeah. Feel so, so if you if you haven't if you want if you want to play from season one, one onwards and you don't want to listen to this spoiler this is from a, this literally point on, just skip two minutes season one literally for two minutes for two minutes um where it's just one of the choices that you do make in season one is to save a lady called doug or carly doug or Car- but i'm glad you remembered the name um and and like doug or carly is a moment and, I, <laughs> <laughs> and you can choose which one to save um, most people go for Carly, I'm pretty sure, because yeah. Doug is... She's an implied love interest yes. at that point. Yeah. Whereas Doug is like, he's the friendly fat guy. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, he's, yeah. A, he's a non-star. And then, it's, and, then, yeah. and then it's literally one episode later, doesn't matter who you picked, they're shot yeah. off, they're killed off straight away, and then yeah. Lily, I believe she's called, then steals the van. No. Is it not Lily? Depending on the decision. Yeah, so... That bit, whether Lily steals the van or not, can change. Yes. But both of those characters will end up dead no matter what. Well, she doesn't steal the you van. You can either she leave go? her. You can either decide. Know, she to oh, the she, she no, the, the, the big decision for that point is you either decide to leave her by the side of the road and drive off. Yeah. Or you sort of forgive her, which obviously then would lead to her stealing the van. See, this is, I think, where Telltale made these games so strong is because we're all sat here saying one thing and we're all saying... We're and all then just proving We're, we're all just sort of like, hang on a minute, wait, did this happen, did that? And that's where it was quite See, strong. It's, it's a shame, really. A massive te- decision so if, from back then. Yeah, yeah. so if, as te- Telltale, obviously, they, they, said, they said that they went under. There was obviously a lot of issues with apparently paying staff and all of this and all of that. Have we yeah. heard of any successes or anybody to take over from that at all? Because I haven't. No. I mean, they were the successors to LucasArts. Yeah. So, I don't know who's going to pick up the adventure game. I think they've just finished what they started. I think indies at this point. Indies. So, indies would do uh, do a good job. I think the problem that you get with, like, the indies is getting licenses for the big titles like that. So, say, for example, like, Game of of Thrones. I think we're done seeing The Walking Dead, The Batmans, The... Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know if anyone played that one, but there was a yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy one. The, the, not the, even the know game, about that one. The, the, game, the game of Thrones um, they did game one of was was apparently rubbish. I, really? I've not even graced it with my time. I've heard it was that bad. I've um, not heard good things. I've heard yeah. bad things. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, like that's that's I the did sort of Walking like Walking Dead and Wolf Among Us, and then I didn't really touch. They, Telltale beyond that. They need to if they if they created some good interesting over so like Square Enix did their own have, have got their own Life is Strange. Yeah. Now that did in, extremely well and that's creating their own new story. So hopefully one of the indie companies if they could do something as something well rolling. Yeah, get something as strong as that out oh, that'd be Yeah. That would be absolutely perfect. Talk, in yeah, other talking news, uh, talking about dead bodies and <laughs> corpses walking al- around. Talking about rolling along nicely like an egg. You might say. (laughs) Uh, Yoshi's Crafted World comes out at the end of this week. Reviews for it are now up. Across the board, we're seeing scores in the high sevens, low eights, I think is fair to say. Yeah. We're seeing a a positive reaction, but not... It's not lighting the world on fire. Yeah. But... I mean... I mean, I don't think a Yoshi's... I don't know what people expect. A Yoshi's World is, is not the sort of thing... Where you're gonna come home and say to your mate, mate, have you heard yeah. how good Yoshi's World is? We were never looking at God of War. <laughs> what God of War sort of levels of Yoshi? Yeah, Yoshi going along with Poochie, like yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's um like from the right. So from the IG, we've used the IGN review as our basis for this. So we followed and taken his notes and. Uh, and seen his gameplay. We haven't been able to play it ourselves as it hasn't been released, but it is being released this Friday, which is the 29th of March. Okay, so uh, his reactions to it and everything that he says is is a lot of fair points, uh, and we'll quickly just go through a couple of them uh, with you, which is basically that the game itself is structured well, and if you have kids or you have people that are maybe, maybe a partner not that doesn't play games as much part, exactly somebody less experienced with video games this is a very good title for them so the first 
the one of the main concerns with the game is the idea that it's not too challenging. But what yeah. could you really expect from yeah. a Yoshi? Woody Nintendo World game? know what they're doing with with Yoshi and with Kirby. Is they know that kids like those characters and they're cute and cuddly, and they make something that the kid can play and isn't going to be put off too hard. Yeah, like even Mario can be difficult if you're a new gamer or a kid or something. So mm. they have series that anyone can pick up and play and enjoy. Yeah. Uh, so to some extent you should expect that, but maybe a little bit more challenges in order. Yeah. I it, like I know that some like the challenge modes and things like that so far they're the only sort of challenge mode that they've said is you can basically go back through the levels but in reverse and it becomes sort of like a time trial. Um, so that is essentially sort of like your more experienced man's uh, version of this game to make it a little bit more peaking in difficulty. But I think the main takeaway that is what you want to get from this game is it is basically this cute, cuddly and beautifully aesthetic looking game yeah. that you, it's just bundles of fun just, to, just to watch. It's just a joy to play through. Yeah. It won't challenge you, but you will enjoy the experience of getting through it and seeing the way the levels are made and literally what they're made of in the case of the flip side levels finding yeah. out how many calories were in that cow you rode <laughs> it go, it does go into that much detail <laughs> so yeah like those sorts of like little aesthetics i think is what's is what it's it's strong suit is it doesn't need for me anyway is i would never i, I never really thought about yoshi's woolly world and for do you know what that is going to be a crucially crushingly no. difficult game but it's, we really enjoyed what it was but it was yeah it was great fun and that's that's what you will get from this game from yeah. what we're seeing so far is that essentially it is fun you're not going to get too big of a difficulty spike there's a couple of levels maybe at the end that might catch you off guard a little bit but for the most part is it's relatively fun and easy so it is aimed at younger kids but if you if you just like to sit down of an evening play a nice chill relaxing game and you can wear different cardboard boxes around Yoshi's body, which exactly. some look... I mean, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to be Yoshi in a Especially garbage give you extra can. armour and health, they actually have a purpose. It's not aesthetical. Did I mean, they? Who yeah. doesn't need even more health in this already very easy game? <laughs> yeah, so you can tell it's aimed for kids. If you've got kids yeah. uh, and you play video games with them a lot, this is a definite must, I would say, I so far. Because so. um, you can never really go wrong with most Nintendo games. Um, but if you are an experienced gamer and you like your Call of Duties and you like your hacking and slashing, yeah. it may be a little bit, just just a yeah. smidgen If pain. Sekiro was what got you excited recently, this may not appeal to you in the same way. <laughs> it's a good game to wind down after playing Sekiro. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. it, 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 it might be a good compliment it, to yeah. Sekiro. It, like... it depends how good you are at Sekiro. If you yeah. are rubbish like we are good and it takes Sekiro, you way right? too long, <laughs> um, then you could just go, okay, well, um, I'm just going to trounce this world instead. <laughs> just load up Woolly World. I may not be able to or... take out that Shogun, but I can beat the hell out of that bouncy ball bird or whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah, <laughs> just throw your eggs and just throw your eggs about and just win it. Which you can aim now. Yeah, you say about the aim. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. obviously it's... Uh, the Which, var- having played the demo, I can tell you that is a very welcome addition. Yeah. Because the... The, the old aiming on the Game Boy... The old aiming on all of the, the Nintendo Yoshi 64. Games. Yeah. Let's go back to that <laughs> one. It was... All of them, it just floats up and down and you just got to time it. Yeah. It's not a. It hasn't been a good system, and it's nice to see that they finally changed it to something. Does it let you use control. the touchpad at all? Um, not to my knowledge. No. no, I don't think so. They could have like that's just something that's because that idea. would have been a nice addition to handheld mode. Yeah, again because it's aimed at kids though, as you can imagine that you get a little kid and he just starts poking all on the screen and he loses Smash all of his fingers. eggs and then he's unhappy. Yeah, and that's just kids though. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll drop that subject there. We'll, we'll, we'll stop dissing on kids in case anyone does have them. We don't want to dig too Just deep in the case hole. someone yeah. has a kid. Yeah. If you are a child and you're listening, um, 
Go, back so, just, go just, play just, Yoshi. Yeah, play play we Yoshi's. We started with Sekiro. You shouldn't yeah, have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yoshi's Crafted World so far sounds like it's going to be a great addition. However, if you're looking for a very much strong contender for Game of the Year, this isn't where you you should be. Yeah. But if you're looking for a nice bit of casual fun, perfect. However. Nintendo did have more news this week, which unfortunately came out just after recording last week. Yeah, so apologies so, if this seems like so old So we recorded news. last week's podcast, and it's um, before, just as this got announced, so we obviously did just miss out on it. Um, but we have been quite lucky in a certain sense, because essentially what's happened is Nintendo, PlayStation and Xbox all did their own we're going to call them direct we like to call them directs i know nintendo that obviously like to call them directs no, and nintendo xbox and playstation like to copy them so why not so yeah <laughs> so we'll all just call them a direct from now on um and essentially each of them have released their own direct uh to address their fans or their player base about new and upcoming games nintendo's one was called nindies yeah, so this was the Nindies spring showcase and we have them for most seasons yeah which is absolutely and perfect this- um, this was a strong one, I would say. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to open a showcase with Cuphead, a previously Xbox exclusive title, I would say you're coming out with many guns blazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, have they the the this is like like we were discussing this before is this is quite interesting because essentially Xbox are now saying to Nintendo that you can have. Yeah. So Some of our games. During the week, it has also come out that this port was put forward by Microsoft. Like, mm. they asked them to port it to Switch. This wasn't Studio MDHR taking the initiative. This was a request on Microsoft's part. Mm-hmm. So, it does lend some credence to the rumours of Cuphead and Ori and the Will of the Wisps both coming to Switch. It was also rumoured that Game Pass would be coming to Switch. But we don't know how likely that is. That's something that you'd have to wait to an yes. announcement. I mean, Game Pass coming is yeah. Well, you've got an you're our Xbox guy. Well, Xbox Game Pass coming to your Switch. Um, what would that even would that even float your boat? I I don't see the necessity for it. I mean, you've got it on one console. Surely that should be enough. There'd be no point in having an Xbox on the Game Pass if you can just get it on the Switch. Yeah, you'd be hitting... When you own both yeah. already, then it's redundant. But if you only had either or, either or, then it would be beneficial. It gets more yeah. Game Pass is sold if you do not own it. But also the Switch is portable. Is maybe a... Uh... Mm. The Switch is... I mean, Switch is portable. Xbox recently have not been cracking out too many decent exclusives. Their, their, yeah. uni- their exclusives have been doing somewhat mid to high... Mid- Mid to, mid, we'll to, mid to high. Mid to high, I would say. Forza has been um, very high. Forza the, was a the rest Forza has been is good. <laughs> um, we had Crackdown, which didn't do so well. Ooh. Yeah, which was something that they, they built up for ages as well, which was a big sort of shame. And then you had something like Sea of Thieves, which had the potential to be unbelievably amazing. And I, it's my biggest dis- disappointment for 2018, the biggest disappointment. So if they brought this... If, if you could get, like, all the, the best aspects of Xbox Game Pass and you got it on Switch, why would anybody go and pick up an Xbox? Precisely. They are I mean, potentially... the Xbox does have, like, is like, don't get me wrong, it's the most powerful console. They still have a couple of decent exclusives. Someone's watched the adverts. Someone <laughs> might have watched the advert. Um, it, like, there is... The, the Switch, however, has... The Nintendo have always played the... Played the the game of you we may not have the power yeah. we may not have we'll the hard way the two other boys play for power and we'll we'll, we'll sit back here and, and we'll, we'll make some because they've got such an immense history with obviously all of their characters from smash brothers we'll just leave it at that that's the easiest yeah. way to describe <laughs> it really um they've got all of this history so why if the games if enough games ran well enough on a switch I, there would be there would be no need for an Xbox. Be reason for the Xbox. Like because then essentially what you do is you just get a Switch, and then if you wanted those high end games, you get a PlayStation, so you can play your Call of Duties, so Sounds then you big. can play all of your Assassin's Creed, the big ones, the big powerful running games. You could just get a PlayStation for that, and then you'd get all the PlayStation exclusives. 
They are selling off their their thing almost. What they have that they can use as their get an export because you can get this. They seem to be selling that out, which is then potentially. Yeah, we're seeing moves towards them maybe wanting to play. Mm. We don't know if they want to ditch the console, but maybe they want to let Xbox. other people. Xbox won't ditch maybe the console. This, way too much money. This is maybe something line with this. Obviously, they may be worried about the Stadia thing. Obviously, we've got obviously portable gaming. Xbox obviously don't really have that, so maybe they're trying to right. get some form of portable gaming platform yeah. with what Nintendo have already got. Well, Instead of making a whole new device that's portable that they can play the games I'm, on there, so well, can we just borrow you, Nintendo, for the moment? I mean, just just going off this, obviously, it's still very, very, very early yeah, days. We are dealing it, with deep like, rumor territory. This is like this, this is so like heavily rumor based and whatnot. Um, but Cuphead coming across to the Switch is an important move and to be fair and a guarantee <laughs> one, yeah and a guarantee that rather than everything else we've just spoke about for the past couple of minutes um cuphead is perfect for the switch cuphead is perfect that is switch. that it's is that game. is exactly what the switch was made for yeah they are the same color as the joy cons that came with your switch unless you're a boring person that the gray ones yeah just it's call perfect. out all the people that have Amen. bought gray <laughs> all that bought gray uh, joy cons they know who they are um, I, I played. Through, <laughs> they know what they did. Uh, <laughs> I played through Cuphead. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love that game. I think it is great fun. Would you get it again on Switch? <sighs> Would I get it? See, I played it right as it came out on Xbox. So you've had. A so decent I've had time. a decent enough of time away from it to be able to pick it up. It's a, it's, it's quite a it's it's a, it is quite a time sink actually. Even though it's not mm. got too many levels and whatnot. It's quite a it's, difficult one. It's, as I it's, understand yeah, it. it's really difficult. Where if would you play Cuphead? If you were out and about and you want, you were playing Cuphead on your Switch, Costa Coffee, and you're in the middle of Costa Coffee, flipping oh, tables. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, because I'd be getting so sipping angry from your in the mug game. man, Cuphead. <laughs> yeah, I'd be sipping my own salty Triggered tears. Triggered by mugs and yeah. cups. <laughs> I'd start just throwing mugs at the ball and just say, "You mocking me." Um, <laughs> Oh, um, it writes itself. Did, did, he, did either of you two play Cuphead at all when it first came out? No. I followed it intensely, but I do not own an Xbox that One, so that, I do yeah. not. That game is, that game is uh, again, it's one of those ones that, well, it's styled like 1930s cartoons. It yeah. looks this, amazing. This will be my Got time. Mickey Mouse vibes all over good. it. Yeah, so you, you're going to be getting this as it comes out. I will out. be getting this yeah. soon after release, I imagine, yeah. Which is great. You've got to tell me how you get on with that, because I get I the will. feeling you will struggle. What about oh, you? I Anything so. that I've you're... not done well on Mega Man. I don't bode well for this <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, well, to be fair, Mega Man's probably on an even bigger level. To be fair, <laughs> what about you, Luke? You thinking about it? If I did get the game, I would get it on on the Xbox. All right, okay. So I because can... it's been out for a year already, you're basically saying no. I'm not going to go out. I wouldn't because the I have my Switch for the games that I can only get on Switch. Yeah. If I can, yeah, like I have my before. my set consoles or things, which is. Probably prehistoric in some people's heads, but that that's just, I think that's a lot why of people a lot of people play the the two console version of games. They have either the PS4 or the Xbox One, and then they get the Switch for on the go and for mm. the Mario and Zelda and stuff. Yeah, but smaller than Mario and Zelda, there were other games announced in this Nindy Showcase, not just Cuphead. But that is the one we care about the most. That's what was first out the bat with them, so we yeah, thought we'd that start was, with that. I would say by far and away the biggest announcement of these small games. Yeah. But, uh, we did see a game called The Red Lantern announced. This piqued yeah. many of our interests. This uh, is a game based on the Iditarod, which you won't have heard of, I imagine. But it is a dog sledding game. I don't even know if that's fair to say. But dog sledding is the basis of this game. That's what we've been told so far, isn't it? Yeah, I'm um, gonna get a the, van. I get the a, voice some dogs. actress is is got a beautiful voice. She will be what sells this game. She's already she's selling. She's it already one of yeah. the <laughs> things that they've yeah. shown to sell the game. With. Yeah, so 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 yeah. They my only concerns with that is that everything that they've because it's an indie game and the way it's structured is 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 it what it's displaying to me is that oh look you can you can heal your bandages you can do hunting and you can do your dog sledding and look after your dogs. The way I'm viewing it is, at some point, you will tend to your dogs and heal a bandage wound and do a hunt. It seems very linear, rather than what the way I feel like the trailer was trying to get across to me, is is it was trying to say, like, this is these are possible. This is what yeah. you can do within this game. However, for, I'm taking away from it is 
this is what you will do when you're playing this story, not not making it something that like if you get injured you you can you can do this to save yourself. You'll be like, oh, at some point you will get injured and you will do this. Your dogs are dying already. You're not even yeah. Like, the trailer immediately shows straight out the back. Yeah. Painful dog death. This is not, not PG thirteen. No, and this is hardcore no, is eighteen not. adult Nintendo rating. Nintendo have stepped away from the days of putting sweat in Mortal Kombat instead of blood. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they've now showed a dog getting yes. mauled on TV. Dog bear murder. A cartoon dog. Funny. We'll put that out there, but still. Yeah. It's, oh yeah, it's yeah. not a real dog. No. <laughs> but yeah, there are um. In the trailer, it does mention that there are procedurally generated elements. So I think perhaps this is a game where you will die and have to start again. Ooh. And perhaps the journey to complete the Iditor will be different. That's going to be so sad, replacing a dog like every five minutes when it dies. Yeah. You'd, like, get, you'd get used to it. It'd be like, it'd just be, it'd just be like picking one to its death. It's like picking and flicking. Like, you, you, <laughs> you just don't even realise you're doing it. No. You just, you just, oh, it's done. It you just like look back over this massive mountain that you've just sled over. It'd just be a trail of like dog <laughs> burial sites. <laughs> That's you reach a point, bit. this nicely voiced woman that you play as has now grown a beard and turned all gruff, and she's like, I don't even name the dogs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she's just so desensitised, dehumanised to the whole thing. Yeah. But speaking of being dehumanised to bodies, we did see a reasonably sized look at Katana Zero. That one was very interesting. Mm-hmm. We're not sure if there is a, a, time, a time play mechanic in there, but there is something going on there. And the instant deaths in that also seem to uh, lend a real sense of needing to plan and to learn your way through levels in that, which, I mean, it appeals to me. I don't that know. captured me instantly. Reminds me of Super Meat Boy. I was about with to the, say oh, that. Yeah, with, with the instant So I feel sports. that's really what we're seeing is that... Yeah, a new, a new sort of outlook. And it looks, it looks cool. It does look cool. They'd have a, they mentioned the time concept with, like, you can reflect things. How that exactly works, they haven't mentioned. If it's, like, a trigger thing or if it happens automatically. Yeah, it's unclear if you control so, your bullet time or not. But I think it looks fun. And yeah. That, and that, that one comes out same day as Cuphead, April 18th. Yeah. So not was, too long to wait. Yeah, I mean, less, less than a month. Literally three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Let's assume that's No no correct. it is three weeks. Okay. It's three weeks. Three weeks on the Friday. We're recording oh. this on a Thursday. We so go. we may have missed Apologies for not covering the large news that happened on Friday when you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> um so a couple of other games that are, were there were many games announced in this Nindy showcase. But um in the summer the ones we noticed were Blood Roots yep. that's coming out. Play as a, a, a hairy wolf man and you can destroy people with everything you find. Now we know where he got his wolves from. All the dead bodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a reverse segue. <laughs> and then with hopefully less dog death, there is Rad. <laughs> Rad. The lovely double fine. So, like, like you were saying before, that Double Fine have got quite a good reputation. They've made some yes. When I heard Double cool Fine, ones. I had expectations. Did you did you think Brutal Legend two at all when you when you saw it? You get that sort of feel I did from it think, actually. There is a little bit of a Brutal Legend feel to it. I'll tell you what, Jack Black needs to I come. Jack Black, <laughs> he, he's doing his YouTube career now, so he needs yeah. to he needs to come back. Really, I must um, say, I would have been much more excited about Brutal Legend two yeah. than I was about Rad. Rad wouldn't be an indie did game. not light my world on fire. See, Rad, I was I would, I liked the look of it. It looked just like a nice indie game. Visually piece it looks of fun. Nice. Colourful and colourful and cool. Did any of you guys notice, because I wrote this down in bold writing, <laughs> that he's laying eggs in it? Uh, how oh, would you yes. not notice that? <laughs> he has he has a spider <laughs> mutation and he can lay you, little spiders. You play eggs. as a, so essentially the premise of the game is you play as a boy, which we're guessing has been infected with radiation. Or girl. It looks like guy or girl. It. Could be both. That'd be absolutely perfect. Um, and it's been affected, I'm guessing, by radiation. That's the implementation yeah. there. Rad and you can turn, radiation. Yeah, and you can turn into basically all of these different animals. The best thing that I noticed throughout the whole of this is you turn into these things and you just start squeezing these eggs out. Yeah, he throws <laughs> a nice little bottom <laughs> section. You have this whole segment of like, he's like biting things with a massive snake head and then punching things and then it just stops. And he's just like squatting and popping out three <laughs> eggs. And then they hatch and they're following him. Like these yes, little heads on like purple hands. 
And you're just like, what the f- is this? Like, I mean, you summon it them works they go forward? with the style of the game, I feel. It's not out of place, it just takes you I back. I mean, I didn't notice it until re-watching the trailer, but earlier on he does have a boomerang arm. I.e. he throws his arm because it is now a boomerang. You know what animal that is though, don't you? Praying mantis. They've got little pincers that are oh, like boomerangs. Like the little enemies in Sonic. They throw the little... <laughs> yeah, that's totally what I meant. <laughs> Sonic fans know what I'm talking about. But, yeah, so 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 Rad, the Rad is... Um... Rad is coming. Maybe you're excited. Maybe, Maybe you're, you're excited. Please, Please, Luke, maintain the uh, Yeah. <laughs> I just is imagine it, that, that it, tube thing. <laughs> I think the music for that was really, music really was good. Nice. I um, think it's got a nice style to it. I'm yeah. just not sure how it will play. See, it's, we'll wait until we find out more if yeah. that's something I think that'll be a, a wait for review, is my uh, yeah. impressions of it. But lastly, it's probably the second biggest part of the Nindies, it was the announce- uh, announcement of Cadence of Hyrule. Now, Mm -hmm. for those not in the know, this is a spiritual successor of sorts to Crypt of the Necromancer. It is made by the team that made Crypt of the Necromancer, but it now features Link and Zelda from The Legend of Zelda and is set in Hyrule. This is uncharted territory for Nindies. None of them have really been using Nintendo properties yet. How do we feel about this? It looks fun. At least I like the rhythm. I just yeah. like the beat. The mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Zelda, what was Zelda that music? game? Like it's like Dungeon Disco or something. You had Dungeon to jump. Disco. <laughs> you had to jump on the beat to this. You only move, and if you didn't do it in time or something, some shit happened. It. I get that sort of vibe from it. The whole beat in the movie. I feel like you might actually be describing Crypt of the Necromancer. <laughs> it might actually be. <laughs> Turns out it's Dungeon Disco all along. <laughs> There's people. In a dungeon looking thing, and there's like flashing lights on the floor. Yeah, we, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we were discussing this. This sounds a lot. <laughs> we, we, we were discussing this before, um, where obviously, because it's a, it's sort of like a rhythm action game, where yeah. essentially, like, with every time you make a move, chances are the enemies will make a move then, and then essentially you just then move, move, attack, move, attack, or move, make a judgment, use an item sort of thing. Yeah. Which, and it looks, it, when you watch part, the. Part action game, part tactics game because yeah. you know when moves are going to park guitar yeah hero. exactly and then obviously <laughs> you have to, hero. yeah you have yeah, to keep up with the rhythm, the rhythm and moments. everything um what goes really well with this is like we we discussed this before the podcast is that the music from the zelda. legend of zelda yeah that is some iconic music is iconic and really good and the moment that you see this game when you if you haven't seen it already is it is it's beautiful to look it's at. Be- as well. It looks. It's got the aesthetic. Cryptic and Necromancer looks before, all right. This looks so much better. Before, than that before it even said that Link and Zelda was in it, I was watching this, just sort of like, what sort of Legend of Zelda spin-off is this? And it turns out it oh, was really? sort of thing because it, like it looks. It exactly, looks a little looks bit like, like Link what you to should, the past. should think, but because the music is so good as well, yeah. it just means that you'll just be w- way more enveloped into it. So even though they bring in this new character. Um, Obviously, you can play as Link and you can play as Zelda, which is great. They will probably quite new to play as Zelda. Yeah, they haven't done that often. Super Smash Brothers, but okay. The the <laughs> <laughs> in Zelda games, you do not often play oh, okay, as Zelda. Yeah. So, it, which is quite cool. I think it's a, it, it's a good opening and a good start to it. I'm interested yeah. to see more of that and yeah. more of like how it's like because I'd never played its predecessor. Yeah. So I don't really know what's available. What's I mean, I am more it. interested in the predecessor now that I've seen that Nintendo have taken that level of interest in this that they're letting them work with their IPs. Yeah. I that's that's, uh, that's looking like the best thing. And that's also coming in spring 2019. Yeah, so so soon. Soon, it's going to have to be relatively soon because yeah. we're getting into summer now. Exactly. Fingers crossed for uh, Song of Storms being in there somewhere. Yeah, love me that you. <laughs> that is a, that is a, that is an up, down, left, right. That is, uh, that's not, that's not genuinely the code uh, for it. <laughs> I remember the code. <laughs> if that was, if that was the code, please just let us know, because um, that literally would have been um, amazing. That would make your day. Um, on the twenty fifth of March this month, so in the past week, we had PlayStation's own little direct that came out state of play state of play uh first of all 
just to point out, this uh, this video has not got a, a lot of likes on YouTube. A lot of people are a little bit angry or upset about it, um, which we will talk about at the end of this anyway. But first of all, so what they decided to do is, it, is this is their very first way of doing a direct to the players or to the audience base um, because essentially they're not at E3 this year. So no, obviously they need... They're skipping E3. They seem to be adopting a Nintendo-like model. Yeah, I so I, th I think I think I like I think Nintendo still might be at E three this year. They are exactly. Nintendo so they they're doing the best of both worlds. PlayStation very strong ahead in this game in this console war yes. at the moment. So they are they are deciding to they carve are their own path. At this point. Yeah. So with the with the state of play in mind and this being their very first episode, people probably had big things and big ideas as to what it could have been um, yes. maybe too big so we started this off um with an iron man yes, iron VR. Man vr so a lot of these games that are shown in the luke showcase here his head. you can't hear him but luke is shaking his head <laughs> so in it's frustration <laughs> so a lot of this state of play obviously it's not just this was not just for indies either this was for literally everything across the board any kind of game that playstation wants to do but a lot of it did focus on VR. So we started off with uh, Iron Man VR. Now, the very, very first thing that it shows of State of Play is a CGI FMV of a yeah. gentleman talking to a lady on a plane. He, f he gets ripped out the plane, puts on the Iron Man suit, and it shows him flying through the air. It then cuts to gameplay... And you can really, really tell the difference is it's literally just a static screen with a couple of arms moving about and what is obviously somebody pressing a couple of buttons. I mean, Marvel is massive at the moment. It's the biggest yeah. thing around. Every it's, The continued it's, relationship of PlayStation and Marvel is the positive yeah. to take from this one, I feel. Yeah, I would agree. At this point, at, at least. At this point, anyway. But what they are showing on this game, of this game, and this very first introduction, I haven't seen any other introduction to it, is it, not, it's not looking good. It's not selling me on it. No, no, I don't think anybody would look at that and just go, oh, do you know what, that's, that's what I want for my birthday. It's, I'll sit that, daddy. In the two seconds of gameplay <laughs> that you saw, even that's already convinced me there's no replayability other than that two seconds. It's, yeah. Uh, but... Blows yeah. up, but blows up. There is, there's nothing to it. Yeah, wait, wait. The hands just, they come out in front of the screen. They do nothing to react to shooting something. Yeah. It's, yeah. It no, there's no like voiceover, it. no interaction. It's literally just, all it is showing on your screen, and I will explain this to you if you have not seen this podcast, if you have not seen this, um, the, this, uh, trailer. this trailer, is essentially what it does is it has a couple of little dials on your screen that are orange, orangey yellow, and then it just shows some arms just moving about. And then it says, oh, destroy that. And then he destroys it. And he goes, oh, destroy that. And then he destroys it. And that's it. That's yeah. it. I'm not joking. I don't think that is we don't even see the levels. Yeah. No. We, we just see the sky. Yeah. You just, there is nothing to it. The it's idea hard to tell if you good. even control the flying. No, that I'm would honest. be, like, the high, high idea, when you see the Iron Man films off, he's got that thing in front of his face. So then to put yeah. that into a VR, it makes sense. They did but, it with Batman. And just Spider Man. And do it worked. properly. Yeah. Just give it something. Give you more control over the suit. Then maybe later on, but that's yeah. you need to advertise that at the beginning. It's because, early days, but yeah. they but did not shit. pick the right yes. bits to show C if you, there's more. Could to you it. imagine if this was their first ever direct that they did and they decided to show this as their very first game? Yes. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Because that is, this is <laughs> that did not start things off very strongly. That's why it, people hate it. From this the is what, I was gonna say people didn't get past the people, fucking, yeah, the five people minutes watched the first three minutes yeah. and were like, I don't like this. No, and just switched off immediately. Um the next one that came after that and this is this is a little bit more of a positive is they did show a little bit more of crash team racing which you can now actually i believe it's going to be implemented no matter what it didn't say anything about it being a pre-order bonus um is that you can get the old crash the models retro skins it says are playstation exclusive they're placed it there you go it does not mention if they are pre-order bonus linked or yeah which is like which that. is but it's a nice touch is, is nice and a nice bit Keeps of an extra. Keeps to the original fans who played it on Precisely. PlayStation first. Yeah, um, and of which I think most people, 
if you've got a Switch, I think most people will go for Crash Team Racing on the Switch, but PlayStation would be my next option if it was a Switch home team. console. Um, uh, there's some bias here, but I think I'll probably get both. Both? I am very excited for this game. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is, if I was king of any games... Among Precisely. my friends, this is among a my friends for Crash Team Racing. I, I, Sewer Speedway is was my was my piece de la resistance, um, and I got wow, round. Wow. I I beat Nitrous Oxide. I almost lapped that man. Um, I was so good. That um, man is that a stretch. Man. It's going to be a massive. Full, we've got a that live man, stream there because uh, it's going to be a massive. The, full the, man, race. the man with six legs. Um, so uh, challenge Ben on sewer speedway. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll make an intro. We'll make it like a bidding war for charity or something. Whoever donates the most money to charity, I'll like. I'll beat you. At, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you pay, who's boss. Pay this person uh, to beat me at a video game. Yeah. Um, so they showed a little bit more of Crash Bandicoot. Um, yeah. Or Crash Team Racing, uh, which looks is is still looking really good. If they keep it as strong and feeling as fluent as uh, the Crash Team Racing original, there'll be no problems with this mm. at all. They're bringing over maps from Nitro Kart as well, they are bringing Nitro which Kart. is really the cool. trailer does not make this very clear, but they yeah. have since clarified that all tracks, all I think it's eighteen tracks from Crash Nitro Kart will be resed up and made to fit the style of the original Crash Team Racing. And will be added to this game. Yeah, that's really cool. It's very cool. Um, I don't know if they'll be involved which, in the story mode at all or not. This but... is this is the sort of thing which that I wanted them to do with the original Crash trilogy when they remade it. I did. I never picked that up just off the premise of I played all the original Crashes. I enjoyed them and I loved them. It I, doesn't add anything. You're not adding anything to it for me too much. So why on earth do I need to pick it up? So this. Is this actually is this is adding so this yeah. is this is not only reaching out to those people that are like oh Crash Crash Bandicoot I love that or yeah. they're going to the people oh I played Crash Team Racing when I was younger it's now appealing to those people that still play it to this day and still destroy nitrous oxide <laughs> on sewer speedway that, that silly man that, <laughs> that kept his ego man. all these years yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah this this is what I was born to do was just that that one level. <laughs> That but one, now I you really... can learn levels from a game you didn't yeah, play, barely so played. Yeah, so I never played Nitro Kart, really. No, so I, think I, I, might, I, might I have enjoyed played Nitro it. Kart. It was good. I hope I hope the characters from Nitro Kart get brought over as well. Most about, of them are in CTR. tag team but racing? Tag team racing is a very different, it's a very that different was, game that was to like, play. That was, isn't there some parts of that, correct me if I'm wrong here, where you actually come off of the cart and start jumping? Yeah, so the story mode in Tag Team okay. Racing, you play like a normal Crash Bandicoot. Just game. ignore me then. <laughs> Just ignore me. There's also, not a the relevant... Also, designed very differently. Yeah, okay. So that's absolutely fine. So, But, like, they're going in the right direction with this. Yeah. And I think showing a little bit more... They're showing a little bit more, but not too much. Showing us a nice little extra of, this is what the polygon... This is the polygon skin, yeah. essentially, where it looks a little bit dated. Looks really cool. They've just left it at that. Showed you a little bit more of the tracks. Yeah. It's perfect. It's Absolutely cool. perfect. The next big one that they talked about was No Man's Sky. Now, No Man's Sky had a very, very, very rough start when it first came out. Yes. Got progressively better over the years. Yes. Now well, They actually... released an update, a big update, and seemed to have course corrected yeah, a lot exactly. of people's concerns. So have you ever played No Man's Sky, Luke? No. On the basis, when, I, when it first came out, one of my friends said it to me, and it stuck with me ever since... That game is as fast as an ocean, but not deep enough to drown in. And I was like, it's wow, that's design. that's descriptive. Okay, describe to me pace of an ocean. What? You said, you said it's as fast as an ocean. Oh, it's vast. <laughs> yeah. I thought, said, I, thought said, I thought you said fast. So it's no. in like, it's in like, it would like go like, like north massive. to 60. Yeah, yeah, but it's like two inches deep. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. I think a similar criticism could be lobbied at. Um... Do you know what? I never bought that. I never got that game just off the premise of everyone was talking about like all of like the ambition of what you can get from it, and like they said, oh, it's amazing. It's procedurally generated. It's absolutely so big. You'll chance are you'll never meet anybody ever again. Sort of thing. Everybody was all talking about that. The only thing I was sat there for going, yeah, but what would you do? Exactly. That that's, was, that's, that, that was that, the issue that at is launch, a, that is still is the, what do you do? Yeah, so have they addressed that now then? I believe when they reduced no Man, re, uh, released No Man's Sky Next, which was their big update, mm. and that was when they released it on Xbox One as well, I believe they addressed a lot of those concerns. They made it, I think they made it possible to lobby up with people, so you can now explore with people. Um, they gave you a lot more tasks to do, they made... 
uh, items more valuable and less valuable and just adjusted the general game so that a lot of the concerns were covered. Yeah. I mean, if it just turned out not to be the game for you, it probably, it maybe still isn't, mm. but the concerns that were there at launch are largely addressed at this point. Yeah. And now you can do it in VR. Yeah. So the big update that's coming this summer is essentially is that adding VR capabilities to it. And not only are they adding VR capabilities to it, they're doing it for free. So they did have a rocky start. They have brought it back halfway through its cycle. And now they're just making it, adding things on to make it better. If you're someone there's that never played, been a better time to yeah, get there's never it. been a better time. If you are a VR player, that is definitely something you should probably look into because I would say that's yeah. that's I that is the pinnacle is the of VR what VR seller. is is really good and really capable of because you could just sit there and just watch the stars and just like fall asleep. It would be cool. Yeah. I think that would be brilliant. Uh, the next one that they showed uh, was Ready Set Heroes. Looks somewhat yeah. fun. This is brand new as well. It's I brand mean, new, but it's just not... It's not bringing anything to me. This game is very much as... What you take away from is what you'll put into it. Mm. If you're playing it on your own, it's going to be no fun. You're playing it with a, team, a group of friends, then that's where the yeah. fun will come in. You will make the game fun in your own way. So from, what, so from what I gathered from the trailer that it does show is obviously it's a top-down sort of hack and slash. It's comp- A little bit gauntlet. A little bit like yeah. gauntlet. Yeah, there is... There is um, there is there is abilities for co-op play um, and also like working in teams, you play on the sofa. However, it instead of it being sort of like you're all on the screen at once and you're all moving about on the screen at once, it divides the screen up, which is something that turns me off from it. From um, that perspective, I imagine it's going yeah. to be an issue. Mm. It's, because you're all so close together. It's mm. not They're not big maps. Yeah, but they're big enough to warrant the screen splitting, apparently. So Seems obviously... Really so, well, it, it, we didn't mention the competitive element, which yeah. is probably the reason for the screen splitting. Yeah. As you are, if you're playing four players, it seems to be that you're playing 2v2. Yeah. And then you fight for the loot at the end of it? By the sounds of it. I think so. It, they didn't go Looting too, is they a, didn't go too far into it. It, it was really a short trailer. The quicker you do it, the better you are for the fight at the end. Yeah, sort of. yeah that, yeah. Sound, that sounds do, like... Uh, just about right they didn't go too much onto it but it just seems like sort of like an interesting idea something that would be good to add something yeah. that would be it, like this is what playstation for me need to do is they need to they need to add these games to playstation yeah. they Plus. don't have many couch co-op games yeah they or even get, couch get these player. out there get these to people that want to play them to give them a try if yeah. this is a playstation exclusive game put it out there for free it doesn't yeah. look like it's a particularly it's high month. end game sort of thing rocket league it yeah. Rocket League is huge because it was a PlayStation Plus game new. Yeah. Everyone picked it up and now people buy it. People buy it for twenty pounds. They buy the, the Rocket skins, Pass. Yeah, the all the passes. It. You even you can even buy them in loot boxes in that now, but then again, so, what game can't you buy that in? Um so that was that was alright. It just sort of like sort of interesting. They then talked about blood and truth yeah. and Dove observation. Back into VR again. Yeah, so this is going back into VR. The reason I put Blood and Truth and Observation into the same category together is because essentially they're both movies but VR. That is what you get from the trailers. I I don't actually know that Observation is VR. I don't okay. believe they mentioned... Uh, no, I could sorry, be they're wrong, both. Okay, but... you, you probably are. You're probably right. I probably misread I that. I could then. be very wrong. They both look like movies. Right. That's what I was they saying. Do... It was just the movie part. Ignore the rest. Um, the Blood and Truth VR, which is VR, I'm 100% correct on that, because <laughs> yes. I remember seeing this growing ad, is an action film, basically in VR. Yeah. Looks, looks really interesting. It looks like another decent VR. These, the VR experiences look like good VR experiences. Yeah. It looks like the sort of it thing... It looks cool. It looks like the sort of thing you'd play, probably take you an hour, maybe an hour and a half to complete. I imagine nothing, it's the length of a movie. Yeah. Nothing too long, nothing too eccentric. But could be good fun. They need to fix the hands. The hands. <laughs> the, you're a little the, bit. You've got a bit of the joint, and they are some some of the bit the images that we saw in that. They are so in the screen, like you. If you were actually in that, you wouldn't have your hands like in front of your face like that. Certain yeah. things like when he jumps through a window. Fair enough. That makes sense. There's a few things you're like. Yeah. There are a few the shots way. that you're a bit like. 
are you just reminding us that this is a VR game and there yeah. are floaty hands? Mm. It, 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 it like but with it being an action movie, like the guns and the shooting, that's all fine. That all works really good. That's what VR is best best yeah. used for. Um, but things like when he's jump on the trailer when he's jumping for the ladder and his hands are completely static because essentially whoever's controlling it, <laughs> that whoever if you're stuck stood there with your move controller. All you have to do is press a button there. You're not grabbing anything. So it's yeah. not... It, that, that doesn't flow. For VR... For these VR trailers, something like that would be better if they just made it into the FMV so that they didn't... You didn't have to grab the ladder yourself. Because I, I can understand the aesthetic and the, the idea is that you're supposed to be... Oh, yeah, you've got to press the button to grab it. But press the button to grab it, but make sure that it's an FMV because it just looked so tacky and it made that... Every single I've watched it that you off. three or four times, and every time I'm just sort of like, ugh, that bit. Yeah, I, I mean it. It looks nice. Otherwise, yeah. The um, the motion capture looks good, but some of the other models look iffy, and that might be jarring in VR. I yeah. found I found the hair very off putting. Yeah. Throughout the trailer. <laughs> I guess it's. it's Again, it's indie, isn't it? It's that they haven't got these big, yeah, massive budgets. Yeah, they're not the budgets. biggest studio in the world. So, so you give them credit. They're, they're <laughs> wor- it's so far. It looks like it's worth worth your time if you've got VR. None yeah, of us do. I agree. So we will avoid it until yeah. we get VR. <laughs> <laughs> we are not really the ones that should be judging it, but yeah. we are. <laughs> um, and then the other game that th- was observation was the next one. The reason that I link these two together is because they the way that they are displayed is they are shown just like just sort of like the sort of movie. That you, a trailer you would see in a movie theatre. You um, could adjust them and they could very well be movie trailers. Yeah, just a, just with small little tweaks, especially observation, is it gives off yeah. a, a, a sci-fi horror uh, feels, feel to it. Feels uh, like Alien or something. Maybe. Feels like, yeah, Alien. Um, and it does just really... It doesn't explain any of the gameplay or anything like that. So we were, we were discussing this and, and what have you... Luke, you got any views on it that you like the look of? Not really. It's um, it's not didn't stick out to me straight away. Um, so it might be worth a go. But said, I'm not a massive VR player anyway. This um, isn't VR. We just discovered. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> or it might be. It might be. Or it might. To be fair, I'll end up coming to VR at some point. Yeah, this would be a good game. To it port didn't to grab VR me. So I I definitely want to see a bit more of it first before I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In indie games. Normally, I'm really intrigued by I'm, how this one controls. Yeah, we're not because it doesn't show anything. It's all off speculation. We were th- me and me and Elliot were dis- deciding that it potentially looks a little bit like um, it might be like its own version of like Five Nights at Freddy's sort of thing, uh, where you, you have are controlling to, the you're cameras, controlling the cameras mm, and you're actually and the controlling systems. the observation deck, eh? ah. Ah. <laughs> rather than um, rather than the human herself, and you have to like sort of maybe like guide her through it. Uh, it's, there's so many ideas that you can get from it. Um, I think that independent games like this is is it's all good and well making this really awesome horror looking trailer, but I need some gameplay if you want me to commit to a, a smaller yeah. title, yeah. Um, which yeah. is great. But talking about Five Nights at Freddy's, that was also announced as well. Yeah. So this is coming to VR. This one is VR. Definitely got that right. And this is Five Nights at Freddy's VR, um, which looks really cool. I've never been a big, massive no. fan of the... This is not a room of Five Nights at Freddy's fans. Yeah. But... We've, we've any, seen... any YouTubers you've watched play them? I've seen loads of people play it. It's it's going to get the reaction off of that jump scare. They were known for their jump scares back when they came out. They were, they were good jump scares for a lot of people. And putting it in VR will just add that. Yeah. I think it's probably going to be the best way to play Five Nights yeah. at Freddy's. Mm. I mean, you're not going to get much more immersed than right there in the cockpit. Yeah, as it were. Yeah, you are very static, and you could only really sort of move the head or put something in front of yeah, your face. Not a lot of room so... for motion sickness in there. Mm, you say that, but you. I'm some... sure there is. Someone will chucky everywhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, of which is weird because there is chucky cheese. It's, it's all for the Isn't there a chucky there? cheese robot in there as well? Possibly. I mean, it's very much based on Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. As we understand it from it's the like British a mouse or something, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, as British people who don't have Chuck E. Cheese, uh, we who seem knows? to know a lot. Um, this, this 
this iteration of this game also comes with a lot of new levels apparently as well. Which so it means that even old fans, if you played the first game, another reason to come back. Another so reason to get VR. Mm -hmm. Get a PlayStation. That's basically what they're saying there. Um, another, the next game that came out that they showed was Concrete Genie. Uh, it looks cool. I I don't feel they showed anything that they hadn't already shown of this game, is my takeaway from it. Maybe I watched something that wasn't as public as I thought it was, but I don't feel it gave me new information. I feel they just reminded people that that was a game they were making that is coming out. Yeah. Did you... I mean, it looked... I haven't seen much of the, the prior footage to this. Mm. What I got from it is like, is it looks really, just really nice. Looks really fun. I like the drawing mechanics. But mm. what I, what I think would be the major thing in this, and you might know the answer to this then, is the drawings that you do in it, are they personalised or are they sort of set? Does it say, oh no, you have to draw like this and it will give you a guidance line as to how you're supposed to draw it. And then you will create the creature that the game wants you to create. So the monsters, from what I've seen, you pick parts for them. Like you decide they're... You have like a selector, almost like Little Big Planet, I think would be the most apt comparison. And you can choose what ears it has, what types of eyes and how many, and its mouth and all that stuff. And then you seemingly draw the sort of general body shape of it. Mm -hmm. And determine what type of monster it is. And that determines how it plays and what it's used for. That sounds like something that I'm way more interested in there. Because yeah. I was I was concerned that what they were going to do is just give you a guidance to ha as to how you could draw. If you're going to make a game where it displays, oh yeah, you can create whatever you want to create, sort of thing, and that's and that's the sort Sorry of that's the that's the world that they're creativity. showing you. If they then if they then stopped you by basically saying, oh no, but you have to create just this creature. There's a list yeah. of pre-approved yeah. monsters that yeah. you can make. Yeah, you can only create one of these six things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's where it would lose me. But this that sounds is good. Hole in the wall, make this exact shape. Yeah, that's it. which is perfect. Yeah. That's... I think there's a bit more creativity. Involved. Yeah, then I think that will be that'll be a strong indie game when that comes out, I think so. and that will, I reckon that'll do well. The art style of this one. Kind of creeped me out at first. The, the mouth what, seeing a black fluffy thing no, chase you down an alley. No, not that. The, no. uh, the face <laughs> of the character. The mouth The humans movement. do look a little bit... And the the mouth animation... It's almost like stop odd. animation. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. I've not seen it done before, so it was a bit like, ooh. Makes I'm, it stand I'm glad, I'm glad we see the character This is what behind. indies do. <laughs> this is what indies do, is they make themselves stand out. Yeah. Uh, but what isn't an indie game... Is days gone? No, it's More not. a that little bit. Studio Bend. I yeah. So that's a much bigger game. Now it there's is. been obviously quite a bit of footage have come out. E3 have shown different aspects of it. Gameplay has been Possibly shown. Possibly two E3s at this point. Yeah, even even that. Now, this one is. I'm not the. I, I enjoy zombie games and things like that. There's a uh, Call of Duty Zombies. Love that. I'm not a big massive sort of like. I have to get Open like the world. dead rising. Mm. Uh, I'd like to play Resident Evil um, to the remake at some point. I haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, but most of the time, whenever zombies get brought up into a game, I'll just sort of get a little bit sort of ugh. Zombie like fatigue. we've 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 had it a lot. Um, yeah. Games like um, Last of Us, they do they did it quite well because they didn't they didn't make them properly zombies. They, well, they, they, they changed they're not it. in this either. Yeah, they are yeah. called freakers. They're, yeah. In the press, they are very <laughs> focused on this. They do not let people call them zombies. Yeah, but you, you're just going down. All, all that is, that if you're going to stand there and say they're, they're freakers, they're not zombies, the only thing I'm going to get out of that is, oh, so basically like at the wild. end you're going to find a cure and you're going to save them all. Maybe. Maybe maybe know. that's what it is. Anyways, so this trailer shows just a little bit more. Yeah. What it did show for me that I really liked is it is a lot more story interaction. And I yeah. mean on a high level. This when I was watching this little trailer for it, is it looked it made me it reminded it me driven. of The Last of Us 
yeah. and more story driven because what I'd seen so, what I'd seen prior to this is just sort of like a couple of little story elements implemented and then just sort of like just oh, here's some gameplay sort yeah. of thing open I'd, world exploring crafting and, and this didn't even do too much that. more there wasn't even there wasn't even loads more time spent on the story it just yeah. showed a little bit more conflict and a little yeah. bit more struggle which the other trailers that I've seen for this game haven't so it does it's delivering to me personally is it's saying this is this is a game where you can follow a story that you will be interested in just like the last of us and that's that's where i'm starting to i'm getting more of it i actually feel more of a more of a buzz towards getting it it's one of those yeah. it was actually the first playstation exclusive in a while where i thought i've just thought i'm happy giving it a miss i'm now after seeing that i'm just sort of like oh they Maybe. they put the same sort of love care and attention that something like the last of us have got exactly. um and that's what on, i want to take away from it they've been on a streak so mm. we have with their exclusives. We had Horizon, we had Spider Man, we have God of War. Yeah. Doesn't seem like they can go too wrong recently. I've probably forgotten something. Doesn't yeah, doing well, well. For, for the moment for the moment they're doing well. I mean this this game comes out next month. I believe it's the twenty sixth, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's uh, correct. April. I know it's the end of April. Yeah, yeah. so near the end. we'll find out soon enough. Um, they showed a little bit more gameplay footage of it and just sort of the sort of yeah. things where you I would have thought would have been pretty obvious but again I, like it's just sort of like if you've got a horde of freakers not zombies um, <laughs> and they are chasing you you can run into an enemy camp and then the freakers mm. would attack the enemies yeah. I'm glad don't get me wrong showing me that that's all good and well um, I would be a little bit concerned if you couldn't do that Considering the way that that game, the is whole laid yeah, out. the pretense of zombies is they're just they just go yeah. for anyone and everyone. Yeah. The very yeah. first thing we saw of this game was hordes of zombies. They mm-hmm. grabbed us with that. They're like, not zombies; they're freakers. Sorry. Oh, they yeah. grabbed <laughs> us with the whole horde aspect, which they haven't. I've never really seen in a game before to that extent. We've all no, seen hordes. I was yeah. interested. But the that first time was they something that. else, like a wave of zombies. They in grabbed Call us with of Duty that. zombies, you create your own hordes by training. Oh, right, okay, let's we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll move along now. Um, so that looks, that's looking really good. And then last of all, to finish off, is they showed Mortal Kombat 11, a little bit more footage of showed it. Showed a nice big two story new, trailer. Two new characters, wasn't it, as well? I thought they had been shown previously, but apparently I was wrong. But yeah, mm. we showed, we I believe we saw the return of the two Shaolin monks, which are Liu Kang and Shao Shu Kang? No, Kang Shu. If you like playing Please Mortal Kombat, me on Chinese yeah. <laughs> if you like playing Mortal Kombat, tell us where we went wrong. Um, this is it, it looked very cool though. It looks cool. It is like what you'd expect from Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Have been doing good stories in their games recently though. Yeah, For tell you what, what, watching when you do watch that trailer, you if you didn't know what Mortal Kombat was, you wouldn't straight away realize that this is a a one v one a one v one. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is quite cool. Two D five. It's yeah. um. It's very cool. It's just still gory as hell. It is. I've not played, reli- not I've religiously not played. played. For a while. I've I've pl- picked them up and played them as casual fun. Never wanted to go through the story. That's something that maybe it could we could look into in future. Yeah. But so far, it's I mean, looking it's looking. If promising. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it on Switch though. To be honest. So oh, it's nice that it, PlayStation they've announced showed it for it. Switch as well, they didn't have, they? But um, I feel like for me. As a nice casual thing to pick up and play, that'll be the way to go. Yeah. But there was one more showcase. <laughs> yeah, so that was the end of the PlayStation Showcase. And finally, the day after, on the 26th, we then had the Xbox Showcases. Or what is it really called? So <laughs> it's actually called, uh, let me clarify this, it's called ID at Xbox Game Pass 3.26.19. Okay, if you want to find this video, to you watch this on YouTube. All so YouTube, of that information. So YouTube, if you Google search it, I'm sure somebody would have made an article and they'll send and they'll give you a link to this video. If you want to find this video, it's the toughest thing known to man to find. So you have to literally put into the search bar of YouTube, which is one of the biggest consumer platforms to get all of this. I mean, if you're listening to this, you're on YouTube. Let's be honest. <laughs> so you have to actually put in ID at Xbox space game pass space pass game space pass space 3.26.19 because essentially what's happened is is they've released this and they've either gotten the tags wrong or something isn't quite right 
but whenever we typed in Xbox Game Pass or ID at Xbox Game Pass, it wouldn't come up. Right. So we were looking, we then at tried At best to... it was reactions, at worst it was yeah. just irrelevant. So we, were, so we actually got the reactions coming up before the, the original actual content. original content. So we were trying to look at it on a TV and we just couldn't get to it. So we had to actually load up a different device just to be able to watch this so we could purposely look it up. So a little bit of a warning, that is a bad start really, but it's at the end of the day you're here for the content and, and it might just be a one-off mistake. But this is also um, an indie-driven uh, yeah. direct where it's all about indie games. Uh, and Xbox do take a much different approach to this then PlayStation and Nintendo did um, where they had they have a lot more hands-on so they didn't talk about as many games but they have a lot more hands-on in the sense that they talk to the creators which is which is a really nice aesthetic yeah. cue. you can we got, imagine we got some deep dives yeah you can imagine being one of the creators where you've been spending hours and hours or sorry hours and hours <laughs> years <laughs> Days, or months years. making a game and that's all you do day in and day out and it'd be nice and it's good to get their own personal opinions from it see what they think they can then tell you why they did it or what's going on obviously people get this sort of information elsewhere but it's nice to get that sort of the, the a direct to it and that's and what Xbox are the, providing uh, the human connection as we yeah. sometimes miss out on so, um, which is great. So they started this off with um, Killer Queen Black. Yes, Killer Queen Black. We're in the UK, so Killer Queen is a song by popular British rockers Queen to us. But in the States, this is a very popular multiplayer arcade game that is now coming to consoles. It was already announced for the Switch a few months ago, maybe. But now we know that it is coming to Xbox and I believe is presumably releasing day and date on Game Pass. Um, the trailer somewhat describes this game, but I would... Very briefly. Yeah. This it is basically it. gives you the three ways you can Everybody win. Everybody else. Yeah. Killing the queen. Killing the queen. Killing the queen, sorry. Riding a snail yeah. over the finish line. And, that, um, if that sounds weird... Economical yeah. win where you fill... Economic, Economic, you fill your yeah. honeycomb. So, or, and the last one is um, filling your honeycomb with items that you can pick up around the map. And yeah. obviously you've got to choose which one you want to uh, or try and race towards. Go for them all. And or hope. go for them all and just hope yeah. for the best. That's pretty much all they showed of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, if you don't know this game, this game, this trailer didn't really help you get to know it at no. all. It looks quite cool. But it looks fun. It looks like it a really be, nice... It'll be a couch multiplayer. Couch multiplayer wise, it'll be fun. Um, and that'll be... Which is good. Which is Because again, good. I mean, Xbox don't do a ton of those themselves. So it's nice of them to highlight... Yeah, and these that do, and it's um and it's free on Xbox Game Pass, exactly. Um, which is great. Um, the next one that they showcased was Outer Wilds. Now this again had this, this was a deep dive one. This was a deep dive, so it had a lot of the creators talking about it. Um, and it does look nice. It's again, it, it's a, it's a nice strong indie game. It looks quite big and quite um, it stands out quite a bit from everybody else. Yeah, so it's a a space exploration puzzler. Yep, I oh, think yeah. that would Definitely. be a fair. Puzzles, yeah. That's the best way to describe it. I saw it. puzzles, I saw space. That's the best I can do. <laughs> it's we, sort of, is that it's, really it? Is that all we got from that? <laughs> it, it feels like um, almost like a cartoonier version of No Man's Sky. You fly around, you land on a planet, yeah. you do a yeah. bit of stuff. I would agree, completely agree with that. That's the closest I'm taking away for it, from it. Um, the puzzles look quite basic from what we've seen so far. I mean, it's literally a small labyrinth, like labyrinth kind of game, get the ball round the, yeah. round the thing. Yeah. Obviously, we would hope to see that pro progress a little bit more into maybe a more harder yeah. puzzle. It seems like the kind of game where the puzzles would be hard to show in a trailer. Yeah. Hopefully. But didn't they say something, you could, you'd could like die every 20 minutes or something? Yeah. 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 So, so by the sounds of it, yeah, essentially, like, you you get reset. I'm not sure. I feel as though death seems a bit harsh. No, they said you at... die every 20 minutes. I'm pretty they sure. They did they... say that. I, I reckon he fluffed his words there. <laughs> I don't think he's going to say die. I don't think you actually die. I think it's like, oh, you I crawled, think it's a reset. You crawled I don't, you back probably, to the ship. You probably don't see the death, but it will be heavily implied that you died. Can you imagine <laughs> if you just got stuck on a really hard puzzle and you just like, you went back there and there's just like 60 bodies just <laughs> just, just piled up if in the corner. If they leave the bodies there behind, that would be hilarious. <laughs> It'll be yeah. like the Super Meat Boy videos, but... 
It's yeah. worse because the bodies will float. And, um, be horrible. and it's one of those nice ones because it's something different from killing. Like every, yeah. the planets, every, fin, every single game. What they much. did with the planets was different. They all seem to be sort of torn apart or bits missing. Yeah, and the, yeah. Like the art so, style seemed interesting on this one. Yeah, they did mention that in the in the trailer where they said that they want it to be sort of like that um, you're, you're feeling like you're coming out of the planet and like it was exploring least, around the planet yeah, rather yeah. than you're just sort of like oh I've got to go there Wandering and get that the and they, just get they use the get benefit that. The, like the wording of saying like the world will still happen around you yeah. you're yeah. not the focus of it so yeah. the weather or something will change or things yeah. like, like that like a comet could strike something yeah. you've got to work around whether you've the been there yet or not this place is destroyed yeah so there was a, there was a lot of like just good positivity to that um, and it's nice to hear the developers and the creators talk about it. Yeah. They they seem like fun people, um, and and it was it's it's a good it's a good little showcase. And again, that comes to Xbox yeah. Game Pass on day one as well. Uh, they then showed a bunch of smaller li- yeah we got a little, little montage games. of the rest of the games. Yeah, they're nothing too much to really say say about. We'll we'll provide the links down lo- down yeah. below. Anyway, so you can read up on them, but I mean, essentially, there like were four games shown in this montage, I believe. Yeah, there was a game called Void Bastards. Void, void what? Void Bastards. Void Bastards. All right. Yeah. No, that really is what it's called. <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> I was double checking my notes there. And I was right. <laughs> yeah. Um, hard to tell much beyond shooter in terms of gameplay, but the visual style is very cool. Mm-hmm. Looks kind of comic book, a bit Borderlands, a bit yeah. That PS2 one... game thirteen maybe. Yeah. Very heavily cel shaded, but looks cool. Looks looks fun from what you can tell from a thirty second montage. <laughs> yeah. What else? Um, they showed a game called Operencia. All I really saw was some floating statues. Sweet. Couldn't Next. tell you more than that. <laughs> Uh, there was a game called The Good Life. You seem to play as a person, a dog, and a cat living in a small, quaint village. You take photos. You play as a cat and a dog, doing cat and dog things. Yeah, not there's... for me, but yeah. <laughs> no. Um, <and> then <laughs> the last part of the montage, and for us probably the most interesting part of the montage, was Supermarket Shriek. Yeah. Which is um, riding a shopping trolley with a goat. <laughs> An average Friday night for most Brits. <laughs> put, it, yeah. put it out there. We're very familiar with this concept, <laughs> and it's nice that we're bringing it to America. <laughs> the way the the way that they showcase these, um, a couple of these, because it shows a quick montage, and you literally only see about four or five yeah. seconds of each of these, um, is a bit of a strange one because, like as you can probably tell from our attitudes towards this. Some of these games, they look cool and interesting, but there's nothing really much we can go off. Yeah. So what we like super, like... we like sh- supermarket shriek because it looks like a great barrel of laughs, and you can get that image that across mm. in those four or five seconds when you just see somebody riding in a shopping shopping cart crashing into walls, and, no, we, and yeah, we, we all there sat, buzz saws, we you all know just sat the there, and we just saw like that's that's something you'll sit and you'll watch on the. You'll uh you'll play with your mates on a Friday night yeah. on the sofa. That 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 would be class. Try and get the best times so, or bash into each other or yeah, whatever yeah. the multiplayer. And this, all of these it's... games are coming to Xbox Game Pass day one as well. They are. Which um is really is Very cool. really cool. Um, what Xbox do is they is they help and support these a lot of these indie developers because essentially like people might see these indie games and I'm like, I don't want to spend the fiver on that. I don't want to spend like a fiver or on this or a ten or on that. But because it's on the Xbox Game Pass, which they might already be buying for the big triple A yeah. games anyway, is they've then got the option to download these games for free and give them a go and then they're supporting exactly. these these smaller and then companies. And such come along and yeah, and it really helps yeah, them yeah. so much more. And I'm sure Xbox is subsidizing them in some way. Yeah, exactly. Models. So like the Xbox Xbox have been like Whilst they've not been like destroying PlayStation in the race of who's the better console yeah, who's and who's selling. selling the most consoles and all of this and all of that, um, Xbox, especially recently, they've been making some really good moves towards and helping smaller companies yeah. like them is just is like it, there's nothing but good can come of it because essentially you will then you then get the chance to play these games for no extra cost on this on Game Pass, and then the and the and the creators 
they then get a paycheck and they can then create the next best game for you. They keep so the game market some... fresh because yeah. otherwise it's going to go stagnant with the same big companies releasing yeah, the same absolutely. thing year after year. There's there's nothing new for people. So yeah. it hopefully will then develop smaller companies into bigger companies to make these new, better games. Yeah, um, And all of those are actually... All of those games are available to be played at PAX East, yeah. of which there they is... They all have collectible pins, and yes. Ex- you can win... An exclusive console of each one yeah. as well. Um, which, which is very cool. For us, again, Supermarket Shriek, that's the that's the Xbox One X that we want. Um, yeah. uh, it looked quite funky. I, f- I feel it's the only one that worked in the montage format. Yeah. I they, feel they, that the others They didn't needed... assist the other ones. They, the others would have needed a little bit more time yeah. just to sort of get across what the games are about. Exactly. But we did get that with the second to last game of the presentation, which was After Party. Yeah. So, um, so After Party is... Uh, how would you describe it? I would describe it as a talking-based adventure game. Where you are training to outdrink Satan because you're yeah. stuck in hell. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Um, no, there's nothing. There's yeah. too. There, there isn't too much. So like there's a, a lot few mechanics. There's a but... few mechanics on like so like the, where the developers and the creators again they were talking about and giving explanation into the game and they were basically saying, this is, this is what you're able to do and this is what you can. You can like take lots of different routes and paths of sort of like, oh, I want to get this sort of drunk so I can get flirty drunk, mm-hmm. or I can get drunk and act like a pirate. That's one of the word. That's their words, not yeah. mine. Um, which is all all great and all. It's that is it. It looks like great fun. It looks really beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a very it, good they, art. Considering the whole game is set in hell, yeah, it had a very varied look. The bars all look different. Yeah, the art cool. style was brilliant. And kind of a good few funny lines in there, I think, between some of the character interactions. Yeah. Because yeah. so, like someone, there's a girl, she like, she, like headbutts a can, drinks, and this alien pops up with like, what the... Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. just a few... It's a g- yeah, a quick it seems giggle. well written, which yeah. is essential this in is, a game of this that is, type. This but... is essentially what like indie games do best, is they create something different that isn't the big yeah. next first-person shooter, is. and they're not creating the new God of War. They're creating these individual little pocket games yeah. that you can spend just... Even if it's just an evening, and this is why it's so good that these I games the game come pass. to... Because they've come on Game Pass, you can just think every... every Every Friday night, you sit down with somebody, you just sort of get, you download a brand new indie game, you play through it, it's only four, four or five hours long. It's watching a new film, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. and you just sort of give it a go, and, and you're supporting people in the process, and encouraging them to make more better games. So it's it's a good start, it it looks really fun, it looks yeah. really great, but literally, as far as we're all told, and as far as we're all shown, is it's trying to outdrink Satan, Yeah. and that's it. Yeah, it... Um... Yeah. There are similar. There's uh, games like Night in the Woods and a handful of other games that seem yeah. to play similarly. But mm. I think if you're into that type of game, this will probably appeal to you. If you're not, it might because of the humour. But I think there's a niche market on this one ultimately. Mm. But Game Pass has a good chance of spreading that niche. I think. Yeah, I'd um completely agree. And that w- and last well just before they finished, um the the direct is um after some cringy commentary by the hosts of xbox which we'll, um, get, which we'll get to which we'll get into in a second when we compare all three of the directs um is they did announce blaze they did showcase some more of blazing chrome which is a run and gun um which you don't you don't get too often anymore no uh pixel art as yeah. well Tr- traditional pixel art like it doesn't it's not newfangled it looks yeah. quite authentic of the era yeah and it re- reminds me heavily of uh, metal slug which is yeah it's very which is metal slug me- very metal slug if you like There's those sorts of things battle toads, battle toads yeah you get that vibe yeah with like racing down the streets yeah. and whatnot yeah it looked aesthetically it looked really good and looks like a great couch co-op game yeah again would be perfect of an evening to sort of sit down precisely a game like that though i reckon will be really difficult Probably. Probably. Yeah, you have to pick your timings and yeah. things. They're either going to be horrendously difficult anymore. or so easy, sort of thing. But it looked like it was going to be difficult, which is yeah. which is great. Well, you saw lovely. some guy got killed in the uh, in the preview. Yeah, he jumped. He jumped the tra- yeah, I was going to say he jumped between the two trains. Uh, imagine, imagine that being your gameplay trailer. Everyone watches you do it. 
So that was um that was all three of them. Uh, that was what they realistically had to show. The the Nindies, the state of play, and the ID. At Xbox, Xbox Game Pass. At Xbox Game Pass, 3.26 point 2019. 19. Yeah. Or, two, or 19. Yeah. Um, so collectively, been a very busy week, especially for indie games. Yeah. They've shown so much. I mean, even the PlayStation 1 had indies in there. Yeah, they, there was so much support. That, which is really nice for these smaller yeah. these smaller creators and a good um, time of year for it there's yeah. not too many big releases at the moment yeah especially as long as you're avoiding the end of the year the people exactly. people have got nothing else really to focus on obviously we had Sekiro and we've got Days Gone and Yoshi. again Yoshi which yeah. only appeals to a certain band but when all of these games well, exactly not everyone is going to want to play Sekiro not everyone's going to want to play Yoshi this here's, is a good time the to promote your, your indies yeah, and um, I feel on that front, I feel as though Nintendo provided the best display here, just because I think Nintendo had the best overall package. Yeah, yeah. So what? So Nintendo's Nintendo have a little bit of have obviously hosts. They for, have, they also have the advantage of they've been doing this. For yeah, a while. so Nintendo have obviously been doing this for a little while, so they've done it before. They've already got like sort of like a following. People know what to expect, especially when they say when they've called it something like Nindies. Yeah, it's people know that it's going to be about indie uh, indie games, which is where PlayStation made a fatal error um, of saying we're not at yeah. E3. Here's what we've got to show. Drum roll. And then they show. Nothing VR, new. <laughs> they show a couple of VR items and iterations, which is really cool. But you've you've upset a lot of fans because you're basically saying we're not at E3, mm. and to let you know we're going to start doing our own dis- our own announcements, and you start your own announcements off with the worst VR game I've ever seen of Iron Man VR. I mean, there was some, there was a little montage in the middle of State of Play. Where they showed some stuff which hard to guess the quality of. It was even briefer than the Xbox montage. Yeah. But I think it would be fair to say that Iron Man was the worst thing PlayStation showed. And they decided and to start off with it. Yeah. Which yeah. is so strange. Um, so you can see why a lot of people were so upset with PlayStation. Maybe it doesn't need to be sort yeah. of like a, a massive backlash because at the end of the day of the level yeah, yeah. Of the, the just based on the base of the basing it on the likes and dislikes on the video alone i mean i confused the numbers around for a long time and i realized yeah it's more dislikes than likes uh and then even in the comments is uh all right it's one of those things people just jump on the bandwagon yeah. eventually yeah. which is which is which is but, all good and fun but i don't realistically it doesn't deserve it it wasn't that great for a first show, but they did still show a few little yeah. interesting things, and they did show a lot of support for VR and a little tiny support for those indie VR makers, which exactly. is great. Um, if you're a VR lover, then maybe it would be definitely something for you. But for the most part, most people don't own a VR, no. so it's still it's something. It's like still a little bit of a VR units to the yeah. So that means one in one in every PS4? fifty PS4 owners yeah. basically have one. So you're still if you're if you've made the whole most of the direct for VR, you're gonna upset a lot of people. But yeah. the Crash Bandicoot was cool. Yeah. The Days Gone was quite cool. Yeah, there were cool bits in yeah. there. I feel the biggest issue they had is they didn't get ahead of this and say like, yeah, this there is there will small... be a lot of VR in this. Yeah, or this is what's coming very and again, soon. And or... then again, this is where Nintendo have done a good job. Yeah, and then but however, I do feel. As though Xbox did better than PlayStation, just in in that sort of regard and sense. But Xbox, they did have their own sort of comment commentary the that went along with delivery and presentation of the, yeah. the people. We were. should yes. say that the PlayStation's presentation it still looks professional. It looks and very it professional. The body like, voice was a it, nice touch. It didn't yeah. distract yeah. from the it game. lacks a little bit of charm, but it's yeah. a good way to get your message out. And ultimately, yeah. that one. The people, other two are people, Yes. So, when, so if you look at it in that sense, if you look at the PlayStation, the PlayStation presentation is is perfect for what it wants to do. People just wanted it to do something different. That's yeah. what went wrong. However, Xbox, 
this is where they sort of went not necessarily they wrong. Kind of it's just in a way. is it just sort of like it didn't give them a nice presentational touch, really, where yeah. they had their their own hosts talking and they seem like lovely people. And I'm not saying anything in disregard to like what they're capable of or whether they they've yeah. been told to We're do sure it that way. We're sure they do their jobs very well. Very well. It but didn't add to the presentation. Th- it didn't add no. to the presentation. Is it just sort of distracts you because they're they're not. They, they look like they've been told to stand in front of a screen and go, you should uh, talk about this. Oh, and let me tell you about this game. It was great. If I, sp- if I spoke like that on the microphone, like even less people would listen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. There maybe. was a tad of cringe. Yeah. It, there was very stagey sort of like, yeah. com- volu- like commentary between I the think... two that just didn't need to happen. Yeah. There's a level of cringe that can work mm. in these kinds of presentations, it gives it like a little bit of like a, Makes it huh, human. that's funny because it sucks. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there were, in the, in the Nintendo one as well, there was just too much cringe. Mm. Yeah. Like w- when they flipped that camera on that guy, I mean, I, I zoned out from what they were doing with it. I was like, Oh, Oh, I'm upside down now. It could be exactly. because of this. It could be just because they flipped the when camera. When you did it, I was like, is there an important game where upside down flipping? Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it, you're not. You put it this way: in you're truth, not adding I don't anything to what it. Game so that it's was like for. exactly. It it did nothing for the. If you it was for Stranger Things, which I know nothing about. So apologies oh, yeah. if that's a very <laughs> obvious part of Stranger Things. Yeah. So it was. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, as far as announcements go, Nintendo did the best announcements. PlayStation yeah. did the best updates and Xbox did the best support on independent games. Yeah. And they were all and they and they all are supporting independent games just Xbox yeah. Xbox with its Game Pass when they're saying that if you buy our Game Pass you'll get all of these independent games for free is so supportive. Especially yeah. like they released the disa- disability controller oh, recently. Oh yeah, the adaptability. Controller. Yeah, where yeah. like the Xbox have made strides towards helping those yeah. less able and the smaller companies and don't get me wrong like at the end especially when it comes to these smaller creators and it's nothing compared to disabled people mm. but it shows that they're supporting smaller people rather than just feeding yeah. into the big dogs yeah Sony are uh, raking in all the good sales but Xbox I think are raking in all the goodwill for the moment for the moment <laughs> for the yeah. moment it's like it's it like it's one of those things that change of the generation so well. will be interesting. So, so yeah, with a with a potential, uh, what seems to be for everybody seems to be thinking that the announcement for the new consoles will be this year. It's going to be good to see for Xbox, for and Xbox and PlayStation. Sorry, um, or <laughs> or Switch. <laughs> um, then it's something that we can look forward to in the future. But as far as these presentations go, they're all sort of relatively okay. Um, yeah. Just at, like Xbox was needs to cut out their their acting skills and Nintendo <laughs> do as well and just focus a little more on them. Just focus, just try and focus more on the games. Um, unfortunately, yeah. PlayStation just really upset their fans with it. There's okay. So the next thing, the next big announcement that came out this week is Apple Arcade. So a video gaming platform. Platform. <laughs> That's it. Um, it's for tough to know Apple. what to call something like yeah. this. Uh, it's a it's a video gaming platform for Apple users for your Mac for your uh, iPhone your for your iPad. Yeah, exactly. You got it. Is um, it compatible with Apple TV? They haven't said that so far. I don't believe. Mm. I don't see why it wouldn't. There's there's uh, Apple TV isn't got like hasn't got like a isn't as easily interactable. Mm. So Apple TV is obviously a, all a remote and control it. I mean, it has got a, like the, the latest ones feature. have got like their own like little scroller on it and yeah. whatnot. So it potentially it could Perhaps. work. I have you don't see in the advert for it, it do, anything yeah. to do with it. So it's not specifically mentioned. But essentially, what it is is it's like it's again. This is going for the smaller the smaller developers and the smaller creators. Is it's the this is the the Netflix yeah. of smaller games so if you've if you've ever played proper games on your iphone so like items like mario run or say for example angry birds where they're just they're, they are smaller games but you have to pay like a couple of pounds towards it 
then um, you fixed price games. fixed price games rather than these free to play pre games where you have to buy In new boxes. Practices. Yeah, yeah, freemium games. So the idea behind it is essentially is like with your family on. Uh, on your Apple products is you can buy and pay it what's probably going to be approximately ten pounds per month. And what's gonna happen is that you can then have access to all of these library of games which they're creating. And they've got a really nice little um advert for it to help showcase what it's capable of. As always Apple do their adverts absolutely amazingly yeah. make everything look really aesthetic and beautiful on their devices because they have got nice devices. So they you know do how to get, make them look good. Yeah, they know how to make them look good, and they've got one of the creators from Final Fantasy working on one of their games. They've got like this sort of Borderlands esque looking world yeah. being created as well. So they've got like there's 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 they, five showcase games that they're showing for it, um, which we won't go into too much detail about because there isn't too much really to talk about at the moment. No, there um, was as much developer. Yeah, mm. it's about the insight. They, they voice their opinions. Yeah, there, and, and they're basically saying how once again, like Xbox Game Pass, um, Apple Arcade is helping the smaller, yeah. smaller developers, the smaller creators, the because it's essentially is is you you pay this ten pounds a month and it goes to all these people. Like, if there's if you see these games on the App Store and you see it for five pounds, once again, you might be just sort of like, nah, I'm not going to buy into it. Whereas if you if you pay a ten or a month and you know you get loads and loads and loads of games for free and then you see that game and you say oh that actually looks quite good i might be more likely to download it and try it it's it it just spreads it more it encourages it more and it it's what it's going to be interesting to see what they do with it so they haven't announced too much towards it all they've said so far is that all it's going to be connected to all of your apple devices really yeah and it can be moved seamlessly on the fly as well so just like the google stadia and it is coming out late this year in autumn that's mm. all they've said so far yeah um and it's a positive thing it's another little look is it's it's a bit of a weird time to announce it i would say um it's it's always it's like their the own heels of stadia i was gonna say it's always like their own response to stadia it's nothing like stadia in the sense that it's not playing triple a titles mm. it's all games that you're going to be downloading yeah. not streaming so you you can't be looking for those 4k assassin's creed odyssey exactly plays it's going to breach iPhone. the gap between console gaming and yeah. mobile gaming you get that element of a bit of both yeah so then people who yeah, do just... want to do both because not everyone yeah. wants has these consoles and things like that but they have smartphones they play where they're traveling and things like that so they're not limited to playing just little mobile games precisely and, and it sounds like uh stadia could be quite resource heavy mm. it's the, in terms of your internet connection yeah in order we, to play those games. we talked about this last week yeah. where, where stadia seems like it's very 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 ambitious and it's whilst it's what we're going to be working towards in the future we're not there yet no it's ahead apple of its arcade is a bit more is, is more realistic if, and it seems more doable and plausible when most of well, to be fair, all of their but pretty much everybody that owns an Apple Mac probably owns an Apple iPhone. Yeah. So they've people got they've got so many consistent. people that buy their phones. They've got such a massive audience. It'll be they can make to see how they do it with the storage. If you have to download these games, if it's saved to the yeah, phone's memory, that is a point. But Stadia then, streams. Whereas yeah, this is this is download. Yeah. I reckon they're gonna leave it in. Oh well, now that you've uh, bought these games, you might want to buy uh, the extra iCloud storage to save all these games. Yeah. Ah, see. <laughs> Damn, you should be working see, for Apple. It's only seven hundred a month, but if a million people do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. It's... But um, the uh, showing the games, which they're not all exclusives, but as I understand it, some of them are. That I think is the big thing that Stadia didn't do. So it's nice to see yeah. Apple Arcade do that. Yeah, these these games look a little bit funky. One of them keeps reminding me of Breath of the Wild, even though it's got a laser gun in it. Um, I think <laughs> it's the style, the art style that they've done. It looks yeah. really nice. Um, but again, like we can't really say much on it because there's not too much they've shown. They've just showcased no. these five games. There trailer. will be more, and there's a small trailer which we'll also link in the description for you. Yeah. Right, um, the other thing that we just need to just quick briefly talk about as well is the budget switch 
and high-end Switch. So obviously the Nintendo Switch got released literally two years and 25 days ago. I was so quick with that number, <laughs> right off the top of my head. Um, and it's been doing really well. Sales are, are skyrocketing still. Absolutely destroyed yeah. the Wii U, which is not a surprise. No. Um, I so believe this it's has already been, um, destroyed GameCube and original Xbox as well. There we go. That's absolutely positive. No surprise there. It doesn't it's surprise me. It's, some it, it, is, it is really good. Um, and we're now getting to that time and not, I wouldn't say it's the middle of its cycle. No. But would... it's, it's, so it seems a little bit early for this, but there Maybe has been... a quarter or a third. Yeah, there, there's a lot of, there's still a lot of heavy rumours that this is, that this is, this is the year. This is the year where they bring out a budget version it's that and a high-end version. Nintendo always have. They have the 3DS, then they make the 2DS. They sort of step yeah. back. Oh, there are so many. Oh, don't. 3DS I was going to say we yeah. we will try not to go down that route because we're it's so complicated. It will take us quite a while so, to listen. To yeah, it will take us quite a while. So I I used to work for Nintendo and I did a couple of little odd jobs. It was only a part time sort of gig, and when I worked with them, is we used to ask them. I used to ask them questions. So like, why does your free DS XL not come with a charger? And their genuine response was, well, the idea is that if you're buying a 3DS XL, is you would have already had the 3DS, so you'll have the charger from that one. That was their genuine response. So anybody yeah. wanting to come newly into the family, and let's, let's not even go into like the Wii U sort of finasco with yeah. how that advertisement went and why that went so far south, because we could speak for endless hours <laughs> and moan on and on. It's, yeah. they are, Nintendo are so weird about these sorts of things. But, but these with the kind switch of are to be the sw yeah the, well. the switch is like they've got this they've got this chance this fresh start where this console launch has gone so well they're yeah. bringing out all these new interesting games they're showing all of these brilliant uh third party interactions you're getting dark souls on there you're getting this you're getting that we've got metro prime 4 coming out at some point we've got the new pokemon rpg game coming out at some point yes. they are doing so well are they going to screw it up here I mean, this is all just a ro rumor as well. It could, yeah. it might not even be true. It's it's it, weird. Like the Nintendo Switch, the basics of the the name is you can switch between console and television. So do you want to just clarify How? basically what the high end and low end budget? So the oh, low yeah, end budget say. is basically it's now just a handheld. Yeah. It's going almost back a step. So it's just sort of like instead like of having 3DS your 3ds. Yeah, it, yeah. Instead of having but your 3ds, then, you'd have your Switch. Or yeah, you, so you remove that whole sweet. switch sort of part no, of it. It's you can't just... call it a switch at that point, can Yeah, because you? you don't switch anymore. And going off like 3DS to 2DS, you're going to start confusing people. Because mm. if you then call it a non-switch or an unswitch, then people are going to like, you get... Is it, it sounds it sounds, it... it sounds so easy for people like us who deal with these sorts of consoles every day. But when you've got like, you've got a kid saying to his grandmother or his mother, oh, yeah. I want this switch game for Christmas when he's got this new low down switch that isn't called the switch it's called like the unswitch or something like that they mm. get confused they'll be like oh no that's not what he's got it was exactly what destroyed the Wii U that's exactly what destroyed the Wii U that's exactly what what hurt sales in a certain sense for the 3DS again once I, when I was working for Nintendo the amount of times you get people come up to you and they go oh I can't buy the 3DS game because I've got because I've, I've got a 2DS yeah. I'm like no you can it it can, that's the whole point of it. That's why they changed the branding on it to say 3DS and 2DS. On it. They always say it on all their things. Yeah. Because they know it confuses people. Yeah, so it's a shame. And let's just hope that they just don't go down. So the budget, so like you're saying, the budget the budget version of this game, it, of this console, would be non, it wouldn't switch. It, it would just like be constantly portable. Only. Doesn't dark. Fused doesn't Joy-Cons. Yeah. They say no HD rumble, which would actually make certain games unplayable. Yeah. So that's an interesting idea. Um, that's really that sounds really budget now. The way yeah. you're the way you're describing that sounds like it's going to be going well, down to the hundred and fifty pound bracket. No, no one, no one has that bracket right now. Three DSs aren't going to be selling that much more. Vita's Vita's been Vita's gone. Stop. Discontinued. Xbox doesn't have one, so no one is picking up the lower end of the console market. Soldier Boy's in console. <laughs> no one is picking up. <laughs> so yeah, that I mean, 
and what... they are in the best position to do it because they know handhelds. Like yeah. it will still be a good handheld if that is what it is, but it would it's not a good move in terms of marketing. And what's I... the high end one? I haven't read much into the high end one to be honest. I don't believe it, much it, is known about. So the, the one. like, who was it that, re- that made the report on this? I read uh, on VG twenty four seven regarding the the budget version. Yeah, so v- um, I think it was VG twenty four seven where I saw this as well, where it was just sort of like it was not as widely talked about, but they were saying that that they've there's they've rumored for two, and yeah, there was a, a low cool. end version, and maybe when when we say a high end version, is it might just be a, a re release of the current version of Switch, just with maybe a couple of little updates. Sort of like how the PlayStation then released the PlayStation Slim. It's not necessarily a massive upgrade in power or anything. I think it would be more like get the screen up to 1080 rather than 720. Make it a little bit... Smaller changes that they can justify the the price. the on the edge of the screen. Stuff like that. I I, I don't see what they can do with the Switch without splitting the games. Mm. Mm. Because they tried making games just for the new 3DS. I think that's the right one. Is that um, the one with the C-Stick? Yeah. The one with the C-Stick. They released um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. And you could only play that on the new 3DS, not the normal 3DSs. And that did not work out well for them. So I, I think, I'm hoping they know they can't split their games like that. But it's Nintendo and you never know what they're going to do. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing else really to say on that subject. Again, this is obviously only a rumour anyway. Yeah. So there's not too... This could be entirely irrelevant. Yeah, I was going to say... We're, there's we're, enough we're... sources and... Yeah, to, a lot of people are talking about it. And it does seem plausible. Like yeah. you said, there, there's there's a, there's a gap in the market there. We're about as far in to a life cycle as Nintendo likes to release a, a light or a, a mini version or whatever. Yeah, so it's something that we basically keep an eye on it. Yeah. Keep your eyes open, and if you've got any any information or anything you want to share with us, please feel free to yeah. comment it down below. Would um, either of you actually be interested in either of these I, if they were real? The lower one, no, absolutely not. No, it it it, it obviously offers less than what I need it for. I like having the TV functionality. I like having it away. Exactly. Um, I don't see why anyone would specifically go for that one. Mm. Um, it depends on the, the price change. If there's, the price, if there's if, yeah, because you can imagine, you can imagine. I that, think it's kids, like is... it's kids mainly, like because obviously adults probably. If you've got a family, the parents normally would want to use the TV. Mm. If the kids using the switch out of port would be using the switch out of port ninety nine percent of the time, yeah. and you save yourself hundred quid. Yeah. Seems like the perfect recipe. They're a niche market, but they may well, cash in on you that. You say a niche they, market. Yeah. How <laughs> many families are there? But then how many people have got Switches then already? Well, they done yeah, but how many, how, few, many but... Have, how many have not got Switches because they couldn't afford them, but this would then enter that price mm, packet. People can afford, afford it. things. It's really Charlie and the Chocolate Factory <laughs> all true. over again. <laughs> if people want things, they can find a way to afford it. That's what I've learned. No, <laughs> that's mm. no. <laughs> we <laughs> will not get into. <laughs> we'll not get into right now. <laughs> <laughs> how, how to budget your life <laughs> on a gaming podcast? Um, yeah, I think, I think if they did a handheld only one, it would probably be for aimed at households that already have the normal Switch. You what? So you don't think bag? they're going to give you a plug for it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't. It won't come with a dock if it's handheld only. It's going to come with a plug though. Yeah, but a you can charger. plug it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's just a USB C. They might make it smaller. Are you seriously justifying them not I'm giving not you a charger? I'm not but I'm saying that it is more widely available than the 3DS charger, and they didn't put one in with that. They could just give you yeah, a cable three. without a plug. I mean, how many people have got you? No, USB just, you could imagine either. them giving you the ca- the plug without the cable. Then <laughs> <laughs> you just look at it like, is it wireless? Uh, yeah, they could make it smaller if it's. They if, could do that if the market they is for kids. That. They could make it a bit smaller. Because I mean, the switch is not a small thing in your hands for no. for kids. It's a bit. If they make it stronger as well, they could make it more robust. The 2DS, when I was in training for it, the 2DS, they said the idea behind it was so that if kids were playing with it, they'd be a lot less lo- likely to to, yeah. to destroy it. It's not First day show. working out in the field, little kid was playing with the 2DS, he drop kicked it across the store, and she was like, the mum was like, no! <laughs> Screaming, and she's like, I'm so sorry! Picked it up, 
absolutely fine. And I was yeah. like, well, like that, that pretty yeah. much like sold itself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, if they can, if they, they can kidify the switch, which will probably be ugly as all hell, but they'll probably remove some features oh, yeah. like the. I logging. don't like the idea, like the uh, the whole the idea so nice. and hearing <laughs> and hearing about the idea that it's going to be like the the. Com- the controllers are going to be fused into it. We're going to have it. a lot of software That's changes, cool. I reckon. Like, no internet connectivity, potentially. Or very limited to what they can do with I it. I didn't even think of stuff like that. Because or maybe Bluetooth. online gaming. Because obviously you can't detach the Joy-Cons. Are they even so they allowed? don't need to put yeah, the you can't, you can't play two-player now. You can't think that Pokemon Go. Mm. Things like that, so... They it might... depends. It depends how cheap they get. <laughs> yeah. We've made this a hundred. If they could make it like a hundred pound console, and literally all it does is play well, four games. <laughs> they sell the dock by itself, and I think they sell it for something like seventy pounds. Eighty pounds. It's yeah. something mad. It would. To be fair, it was always so. Just selling it without that. The dock is, is the dock is ridiculous because it's just a piece of plastic. It's just essentially, it's a piece of plastic with a HDMI and got... a USB C in it. Yeah, mm. and it's like it is doing a little bit, but it's not doing. A little bit. It's doing nothing. But they've made it so that obviously you can't use... they tried to make it so that you can't use third-party ones because if you use a yeah. third-party one, it Bricks, destroys yeah. your device. So yeah, if you are listening, don't use third-party software yeah. or you hardware. You know this by now if you are a Switch owner, but please... Don't use... Be very careful with the third-party docks. Yeah. I mean, that was the last thing I'll just say just before we end on this one is that if they're... What well, they could do, wireless charging... Yeah, like kids, love, wire, wire, kids wire, love wireless I mean, charging with their iPhones. I mean, I'm not, not going to lie, but a little we joke about. There's so many kids with iPhones nowadays. But like true. you say that, like Whistle like off. putting like putting a plug into like a device is like is simple to 99 percent of the world. But the one percent that is five and under or seven and under, they will somehow manage to snap it off inside it mm. or anything like that. I know it's only something small, but just imagine just. If it came with like a wireless charging pad, I mean this this is going very far. Yeah. Like this because it I costs quite a bit of money. But that's not them. The, yeah, this yeah. might yeah. actually increase the value. This is this, 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 this is this, this, is, this is, is the high end switch. Yeah. <laughs> the um, high end switch is handheld only. But, it's, but it's, it's just food for thought, isn't it? It's something to think yeah. about. Um, uh, one of the one of the other things that's happened recently uh, is literally actually just yesterday is Square Enix have Luminous Studios with the release of the final episode for Final Fantasy 15 um, which is Episode Arden Episode Arden um, that got released yesterday and essentially they've now confirmed and said that is the Final Fantasy 15 story done which is obviously not great because there was a couple of other extra episodes but when Tabata left uh, the studio which he created um <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. all the all the creative juices must have gone with him because they decided to finish up a couple of things and leave it at that. Now, Final Fantasy Fifteen, I I did like, and I'll have to go back through again to experience Episode Arden. But what's more important on this point is that Luminous Studios, which is the studio that did Final Fantasy Fifteen, are uh, now said that they're working on a new IP. And it's going to be high end, high quality, just like Fifteen was, mm. which is quite interesting. It's quite yeah. good. I enjoyed Fifteen a lot. So Elliot does. Luke, as Luke voiced last week, that he wasn't he wasn't too big of a fan. I mean, the game has changed so much since you last played it. Mm. So it might be something that you might want to try again now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Luminous, I played at launch or around launch. We played. As well. We played launch. So me and Elliot. Yeah. Like so we haven't played it with the ability to switch characters on the fly. Yeah. So essentially, what we did is we started. We we played Final Fantasy fifteen from launch through to the first to through to the first set of DLCs that came out with it. Apart from comrades. Apart from comrades, uh, which we just never got round to, and just and and really enjoyed it from that but then obviously it's been updated so much and made so much different mm. is it's almost like a whole new experience and it's what exactly. the game originally should have been so it is something that's going to be worthwhile but now Luminous Studios are obviously working on something new chances are as it's not Final Fantasy 16 we were having we were sort of in discussions about what classifies as a new IP yeah. because essentially like Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy gets hairy around Final these. Fantasy 16 
does that count as a new IP because it's a new story, a new, new story, new characters, and all of this, or because it's so much taken from the prior one? Like, how does it work? So it is something just sort of like a space just to watch, really, um, and see where we can go from there. But it is important and good news, and it's good to hear that Square Enix are are going strong because they yeah. were. Obviously, they've got Final Fantasy VII, which they'll be remake, which they'll be announcing, no doubt, some more information sometime soon um, coming up. Hopefully. But if, hopefully, you'd like to think, with how they they like to take their time with their games because they do, yeah. they have such, in so, such unique games. But hopefully, it's something that we'll get an update on, maybe at E3 to hear what Luminos have been working at. I mean, there's the game from uh, Depends last Depends how year. old this news is. Really, because they could be no, but I mean. Oh, so like. So they're announcing it now, now because Arden is out. Yeah. But Arden was presumably done. Eons ago. Month, months ago, probably. Yeah. So maybe they have been working on this new IP for a little while. Hopefully, it's not like just a follow up to Chocobo's yeah. Mystery Dungeon, because technically that's a different IP. Yeah. But, but that, like they said it's high end, high quality. So they're going for the realistic, really cool. Basically, yeah. it sounds like, like 15, 15, 15, 15 but with a new IP. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. The, and if they've learned from their mistakes and they've now lost Tabata, which is not good, obviously, um, but Tetsuya Nomura is now on Final Fantasy VII and he's focusing on that. So yeah. it just means that they'll have to find a new director. They'll have to make sure that their new director is hopefully not spread across three different projects like yes. Nomura was. Um, and finally, the only other last things really to talk about, as this has been quite a long podcast, is the free games this month. So PlayStation have now stopped giving out the free games yes, for PlayStation last month, Vita uh, and PS3. P- PS3. So now they just focus on the PS4. Obviously, this is the first podcast where we're able to announce yeah. what new games are coming out. Um and what we have coming out is Conan. Conan Exiles. Conan Exiles. I've never played it. Nope. I haven't played it. I believe it's... I think it's an MMO. An MMO? Yeah, do not... you know what? I've had the I same thing. It's Are the you thinking of Big world... Bang Theory, my chance? Is that is that Conan Exiles they're playing in that? It might... Oh, I don't know. It might be. I think Let there, us know. There's another Conan World game, which is where it yeah. gets confusing. I believe... I believe this is like a survival crafting yeah MMO type game so you get stronger over time RPG elements that's quite cool and quite funky yeah another quite cool and quite funky game that PlayStation are doing as well is The Surge um, and it, that's those, much more interesting for me yeah it's for those of you that don't know is The Surge is basically uh, cybernetic Dark Souls yeah. yeah so I've heard it described yeah so you, a lot of like ripping off limbs using limbs to attack enemies and exactly the same as the Dark where the Dark Souls games work is essentially is if you die you have to get back to your grave to retrieve all of your souls and items sort of thing yeah. um this was in the era where dark souls one this was had come out dark souls. yeah and then they would do it and dark souls 2 had just come out this so was like every Lords single company fallen. was just like yeah I, I, right. we all want to do our own dark souls it was like lords of the fallen that had was very dark souls yeah. Yeah. with the whole dying collecting your stuff back yeah and so is and those are great games um yeah. Well, Conan, we're not too. We're not sure. Not on. sure on the surge. But we have, we've the surge played I've an played. Of the surge. Yeah, the surge is the surge was quite fun. It's quite cool. Um, it's worth. It's worth. This At the end will of the be day, the way they're free, aren't they? Yeah, I wouldn't. It's not something that you'd probably go out of your way because the the thing is, if you wanted to play one of those games, you'd get one of the Souls games. Exactly. exactly. There's but if it's the free, there's nothing yeah. wrong with more Souls. Um, exactly. But the thing is, is. Xbox obviously have their own free games with gold this month. And they yes. have a very strong one. So they have Technomancer, first of all, uh, and Outcast, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. So that's probably a little bit more known than the other two. But the big one that they've decided to go with is a release of Star Wars, Star Wars Battlefront 2. The original one as well. It's the classic. The, the classic. beloved one. The oh, beloved one. I remember like... getting that at Christmas. <laughs> I think it might have been the same for me, mm. actually. <laughs> I didn't. 
Um, oh, I was unloved. Oh, uh, yeah. You were missing out, you poor unloved Now is your child. Child. Xbox loves chance. you, Ben. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't have gold, so I steal it off everybody else, so I'll have to wait for somebody else to download it. <laughs> um, that's, that's obviously quite... Yeah. Quite cool. That's this would be very cool for me if I were an Xbox in. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for the nostalgia trip again. That's. Um, I have a PS2, so well. I could easily go and play it for some reason. Yeah, I just I have never thought thing. of it until now. So I saw it. I was like, yeah. This is where it comes down to like getting onto like the future the consoles and whatnot. Is so so good. Yeah, but and this is why they need to do things like this, where they release it as a free game because everybody wants to play it. You've had this. You've had an Xbox for how long now? And why I've... didn't you go back and buy it so that you could play it? Was Battlefront two actually released on Xbox though? Yeah, I, yeah. I I thought, originally, yeah. I remember having on. the Battlefront the first one on Xbox. So you're telling me that they released the first one but on I, Xbox, but, but I, Battlefront two? No, 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 I, no, no. We won't release that on Xbox. I had Battlefront two before Battlefront one. I, I had, did the same thing. I had <laughs> Battlefront one on my the original the black Xbox. Right. But I had. About, I had Battlefront 2 on my PlayStation 2. Right. Uh, and for every reason, I was just a stupid kid back then, just assumed they weren't released. It wasn't ah. released on that other console. No, so I, I never, I have never to I this day... I played multiplayer parties with the Xbox version of... To this day, yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah, uh, friends, didn't yeah. we? Up to this day, I've never seen Battlefront 2 in an Xbox cover. Wow. Hmm. In any of the, the reselling places, so... Well, that's... Uh, people must be clinging on to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people... I imagine nobody yeah. wants to sell it. Yeah, that is, that is like an amazing classic. But now game. they can sell it because it's free on Xbox. Yeah, as I have oh, done that, many a time. That is, that is the sort of game where it will go down. It will go down as one of those like yeah. really expensive games eventually because everyone will want it. I've done with... that. I've traded in games that have been left free. <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, games with gold and the, um, the 360 games, do... Do they support the online servers or not? Like, can people now play classic Battlefront 2 online? Because if so, I feel that's actually a far bigger deal than we yeah. realise. But I'm like guessing it, is like not the case. You'd like to think the servers would still be turned, turned off. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh. Because obviously, I mean, who made Battlefront <laughs> 2, the original? <coughs> LucasArts. Right. Mm. And how and are pandemic, they... pandemic, both of whom are gone. And who's going to keep them running? Just the love in Phil Spencer's heart. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's, um... I'm yeah. trying to think of other games that have been released backwards compatible that have online and yeah. I well, can't think of... Xbox 360 wise some of them are still going some of them pro- like, but, I'm like, sure Halo but like say for example still like even yeah. like Dark Demon Souls that's PS3 that's servers offline on that yeah and that's not yeah. even I was there when it went offline yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sad moment everybody was uh, praising the sun actually praising the sun wasn't, wasn't even one. a thing yet well it was when the servers were turned off but yeah that's it yeah. So that's that's about as um that's about as fun as this week's been. That was a lot to talk about. It's a much a lot has happened from a, a lot, lot of companies. Was the busiest week I've seen in a long time. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't even big news. It was all lots and lots of just small news. Yeah. And it was interesting to lots see what stuff. lots of people had to say. Indie top down games. Take away yeah. that from this. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, obviously, all the links for uh, all of the videos will be provided below. Um. In the in the what's description it description box is it <laughs> you've been talking oh, too sorry. much you can't we're do it we're hitting the long. two and a quarter hour mark yeah. so we're allowed to start slipping these bits <laughs> yeah so um but um feel free to leave any feedback it's all really appreciated um on how to improve on what we could do better for yourselves um but other than that i believe unless you guys have got anything else left to say no i believe that's for next week no so yeah. thank you very much thank for tuning for in listening. thank you and uh we'll see you next week on the installment three